Ladies and gents, welcome. We have the second semifinal of Titans League Season 2. And neither player was able to make it to the finals in the first season, to many people's surprise. They have looked extremely good. And they're two teammates who know each other well. Uh, probably know that there uh, are plenty of strategies and their secret book. But I wasn't expecting this. We have Italians for Viper and then Saracens for Tato. Game number one, Regicide Fortress. With me, I have the legendary... Caster Dash, what's up, dude? Ooh, legendary. Legendary. Oh my that's that's something to live up to. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm ecstatic to be here. Um, the tournament in itself has delivered uh, to such a degree so far. Uh, quarterfinals, semifinals as of yet. And now we get Viper and Tato. I mean, could we ask for a better matchup uh, and a best of seven series ahead of us? Yeah, I'm excited. Also, funny little thing. They had done this before when they played each other in another event um i forget it might have even been group stage so viper likes to play as yellow right which is what i have him as uh capture age allows us to change colors so i've changed tato to red but <laughs> tato chose gray for his color in game you meaning, he did meaning that if viper wants to see himself as yellow he will have to see tato as gray which is very hard to see and it kind of can clash with yellow so Tato with a little bit of a jerk move here, but they talked about it before and Viper complained about it. I find that kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> too good. Too yeah. good. All right. What do we end up with Civ wise here? Italians and Saracens uh, of all things. Yeah. On Registered Fortress, which is very intriguing to me. You know, Saracens, I think was some level of a counter pick. It was a mind game from Tato where he was expecting Viper to go for something where maybe even the Mamelukes could have been useful for him. Um, we would have to look back at the draft for that, and we'll have time for speculation later, but I'm guessing that Viper had shown before that he likes to go for a civilization, and Tata was like, ooh, I've been waiting for this moment, and then he saw Italians and thought, ooh, I'm not so sure if my Mamelukes are going to work now. Um, yeah. So it's just different. I don't think I've seen these civs picked at all in the entire I was gonna say, season one. It's uh, We've seen Italians drafted somewhere i just recall seeing like it at for, some point. For but in terms maps. of regicide oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In terms of regicide absolutely not um and that's what i was gonna say, bring up uh before this series with these two players just in general too we had we had the whole gl side of the bracket right essentially it felt mm -hmm. like yeah um but given that these players just have so much experience playing against each other as well as i'm certain plenty of conversations around strategy i can't even imagine uh what it feels like to jump into uh, a map and civ draft against one of your uh, teammates like this and the mind games that are at play uh, in in each, you know, map to map, the selection of your civs. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, I, I covered Doubt versus Tato in their round of 12. And I remember being somewhat critical of Doubt. I was like, why didn't you use Chinese and Regicide Fortress? And so I spoke to Doubt mm -hmm. later and I thanked Doubt for the amazing game. It was, game number four is like one of the craziest games we'll ever see. And uh, he was like, well, with Tato, it's always mind games. And sometimes it actually hurts to know too much <laughs> because you think yeah. <laughs> too much about it. And so Doubt explained. It was so interesting. I might talk about it later, but he was like, uh, well, basically, he picked Mayans, which I thought was Regicide Fortress. And then I went Vietnamese to counter Mayans. And then he picked Goths to counter Vietnamese. And then at the end of the day, they ended up with Aztecs and Burmese on Regicide Fortress because they scared each oh. other off of their civilization. <laughs> so I thought yeah. that was funny. There's great Burmese play, though, out of uh, Tato on that one. My One of my favorite uh, games of the whole series, though, was the, um, um, what was it, uh, Enclosed or the the one where uh, Tato and 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 uh, Dao basically base traded around oh, each uh, other. Oh, the Fortified Clearing. Yeah, Fortified that game clearing. was so That's crazy. Oh my god, that one was so nuts to watch. Oh, look at this. So the scouts were engaging with confidence there, especially from Viper, because he was so close to where the castle could be for Tato. Mm. Uh, Tato runs back with a weak scout into his castle, but Tato actually made a Mameluke, and he was hoping to kill Viper's scout there. So I don't know if Viper spotted that, but he's going to make a Genoese crossbow now. Gets away on 5 HP. Happy about that. The uh, 3 TC's up for Tato a little bit quicker than Viper, but... It's Regicide Fortress. We're going to be in for a long one, friends. Yeah. Now, normally, the the civilizations that play on this map are civilizations that always rely on their unique unit. And I, I love the Mameluke, 
but I don't think the Mameluke can really, you know, be prevalent due to the cost and also the existence of the Genoese Crossbowman. So if I'm Viper, I live and die through the Genoese Crossbowman. I try to do what everyone else does and control the middle of the map with it and then ideally push an early Imperial Age with an additional forward castle. Uh, for Tato, I, I don't know what you do, Dash. Like, obviously a couple monks could be helpful, but you're probably going to have to switch into archer range units, which is just not... It's just time-consuming and a little uncommon for this map. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I think, again, yeah, from a perspective, having the Genoese is such a trump card, right, uh, to the to the Mameluke option for the Saracens, mm -hmm. uh, or even, you know, their ability to go into knights or camels, right? So you're essentially, you know, relegated to uh, to the archery range. Uh, for the most part, and so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna struggle to find an answer. I think for Tato in this one, outside of you know uh, pure play, right? It's so therefore it's gonna be about the player and not about the sieve uh, this time around, and about uh, finding, you know, an, a creative opening uh, or uh, way of attack. Yeah, definitely, because I think with the cheaper uh, up times, right, it being cheaper to go to feudal and then castle, which Viper's already taken advantage of, but then imp. Viper is going to have a lot of wiggle room. And I want to just talk about the level of these guys. It's almost the perfect map to start a series because we can do all of our intro now. <laughs> um, though we need to pay attention to Tato's scout because he might kill Viper's monk. But they've just both played so good thus far. Viper even seeing that actually, Dash? Is he going to heal up his scout He's and then go fight it? He's also bringing all the Genoese over as well. So ah, I, see. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, just kind of grouping up his units. Great for him to spot that and try and keep the monk alive. Oh, looking for the convert even. Yeah, just scaring it away, I guess. We'll heal up his scout now. But man, yeah. Viper, he beat Jordan 3-2. And I don't know. That if was I've... the most epic series I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know if I've ever seen Jordan bring that level. I told Jordan afterwards that I hadn't seen him play that well since Hidden Cup 4. Uh, yeah, Hidden Cup 4. But honestly, I thought about it, and, and I think that's the best Jordan I've ever seen, and Viper converts the converted. scout. Ooh. That's pretty big. He will get that first relic in. Tato already with one relic in, on his way to get the second one yep. over here to the eastern side of the map. But it looks like uh, Viper just in time to look to contest that with now two scouts and three Genoese. Let's see what the Mameluke does. Viper... Just going to say the level it. he had to have against Jordan was incredible. We know he's coming in in tip-top shape. And, oh, he's going to delete the wall? The monk? It will survive. Oh, he garrisons just in time. <laughs> <laughs> However, but Viper... now the Gen I love it. The Genoese is going to camp underneath now, just outside of the town center range, too. So uh, going to have to pull over yet another monk to look for the convert. Yeah, that, them away. that is such a viper thing to do right there everyone else just runs away uh, but good work all around here you love to see it man from the color choices to the personality you know these guys have it's always always something to laugh about you know absolutely too funny fourth tc going down for viper now just outside on the northern side of his base and a siege workshop now for Ooh. tato at the front of his base and a second monastery. This is more of an arena style thing. You just don't see this on Fortress very frequently. What do you what do you make of this? I mean, we just talked about how he's gonna have to do something creative yeah. to kind of overcome the civ disadvantage that we feel that he's at. You actually think he's gonna look for some kind of a castle push, like on the southern side of Viper's base? It, castle pushes are so hard on these versions of Regicide Fortress because of the castle placements. Yep within I, walls i i think this is where it has to start to some have some type of snowball and he's been a bit little unlucky actually not to get more conversions uh, viper was able to kill enough monks and viper saw the siege workshop too so i mean listen if tato can get a forward position or tato's an imp faster i believe that it could turn into bombard cannons and monks but it's just unique and as i say these words dash he's actually used the market which is a big bonus yeah. for the saracens and he is very close to clicking up there it is there's the click on his way to imperial age beating the italians uh on that click up as you mentioned because of the market uh prices that the saracens are afforded but viper won't be too far behind we see him clicking loom and uh, just about at the italian resource mark to click up to imperial as well I would be a little confused if I'm Viper right now because the weakness of the Genoese is that they 
who don't have a lot of range. So they have one less range than a normal crossbow. Uh, what makes them strong is they do a, a lot of bonus damage against cavalry. So you don't exactly right. want to send a bunch of low range units in towards monks. Because the monks already have nine range. It'll be 12 range if Tato ends up getting upgrades. So as Tato yeah. comes forward with his castle, Viper might kind of be in adapt mode. Like he has to truly wait and see what Tato's going to do. And he might not really have the time for that. Absolutely, but I'm I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Tato. I because I do think this is his best opportunity to take yep. the win in this matchup. He's got the ram to start putting pressure onto the base in Castle Age. This wood line though is actually very advantageous for Viper. As Tato goes for the gate, he actually can't get through the wood line on the other side of that gate. Oh, uh, that's a fair point. Yeah, he's gonna break through and then he's gonna have to somehow get around the trees. The positive though for Tato is that Viper is, has the gold right behind it. And the main thing Tato probably wants here is he just wants the Trebs to hit Viper's castle. So he's still going to be able to accomplish that, thankfully. Yep. Taking out one of the watchtowers. Gets a villager pick on that farm. And is going to be able to pressure both the main gold and the castle as he hits Imperial Age in about 20 seconds. Wow. So even getting Third redemption monastery. now. Yeah, and more monks. It, it kind of makes me laugh. Uh, Saracens used to have a tech called Madrasa where you're... When you lost monks, the, some of the gold cost was returned to you. Right. And you just, you never saw a Saracen monk rush, and the tech was kind of expensive. And I'm just chuckling because I'm like, if only he had Madrasa right now, that might actually make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, block printing, uh, illumination coming in for Tato. You know, this is starting to ring reminiscent of that Burmese game where just tons of monks. And as a lot of these, you know, more uh, closed maps have played out, it's been strong monk pushes with lots of Imperial Age Siege. First Treb already out for Tato, going to start pressuring that turret for the Viper. Viper already using stone to put up another castle on the northern side of the map. So expanding out, accepting the fact that he's going to get pressured a bit here at the front of his base. Something that's so tricky with these defending these pushes is that usually if the push is in the right spot, you're not able to mine a lot of stone. So for Viper right now, he's got zero on stone. I'm trying to look around. He has stone directly behind the castle. But then his uh, uh, yes. his other stone is out to the right side of Tato's castle, so unavailable to him. So once he gets through those last couple tiles, he'll be he'll be hurting for stone for sure. Yep. Now he does have his own trebs now, but he might be forced to buy stone in order to just keep his castle up. And remember, we're gonna see bomber cannons from Viper, but the monks are out for Tato with 12 range, so he could convert the cannons just like he's tr trying to convert the crossbowmen right now. Absolutely. Wow, those crossbowmen are way out on a lamb at the moment, looking to pressure a woodline of Tato. Just pull some attention elsewhere on the map. Castle dangerously low for Viper, has a few villagers tasked to repairing it, but with three trebs now hitting it, it's almost certainly going to go down as the first bombard, bombard cannon is in production. Yeah, so I, I like what Viper's done to get some value from his army, but the other army is going to have to come into play here. And Tato has to be careful, but he has enough monks to convert most of that group. So it's Viper who's careful, and Viper backs away, and Viper could lose his treads. Uh, there, there's a Manganel, there's a couple Mamelukes. It's just so much awkward pressure coming in from Tato from all angles. Absolutely. A fourth Treb now added for Tato. He's just not going to take his foot off the gas. You can see the difficulty of the range for these Italian crossbows. Can't get anywhere near the monks as they sit under the castle. So it's all about these bombard cannons. Yep. Viper has to get them over and start pressuring those trebs themselves as he loses one of his own trebs, and another one is close to going down. Yeah, Viper staying here with one treb against four, very uncommon. Players do not normally do this. If it's one against two, you can stay in with repairs, but it feels like if you stay there for too long, you'll lose that treb. But he, he is going to take the Bombard Cannon, and he hasn't lost one of his own. So while he loses the trebuchet, it's at least not as bad as it could be there. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Tatso at this point isn't necessarily pressuring anything super value outside of the monastery. Two relics in it for the Viper. He moves in to pressure these vills off of the trebuchet of Tatos. He gets a few picks here. It will go down. That's one of the four. Yep. Two bomb, uh, three bombard cannons versus three trebs. The Viper feels happy to just to sacrifice crossbows to snipe the monk so he doesn't lose his cannons. And he's, he has not lost his cannons. And Tato's trebs are falling just like Viper's did. And Viper, as you would expect, right back in this game. And Tato now, I'm wondering what's he going to make here? Because it's just it seemed like his plan was bomber cannons of his own. 
and then the monks, but he's got seven monks and just one cannon. Absolutely amazing defense here out of Viper with just the Bombard cannons and the crossbows. He's got to retreat with these two, make sure they don't get converted from Tato, and he will do just that. Buys himself some time, and with a completely even scoreline in villager count, we've kind of hit a bit of a stall point. Yep. Yeah, and I think right now is when Viper can do his damage with eco transitions. You can see the farms in the back of his base. With 55 on wood, that will change. And Viper's only been up against cannons, and he's been up against monks. So the natural move is actually for him to go for uh, something like Light Cav, and Italians actually get fully upgraded Hussar even. So I'd like to see Viper think about it. He's got two scouts, and I just noticed Capture just telling me he's got a couple more on the way now. So he's definitely thinking. Definitely on the side of Tanto, teching into Elite Skirmisher. Uh, but I'm that might be a little too little too late when it comes to the crossbows, well, as we see the light cav tech come in yeah. uh, from the Viper. So just you know, counters on counters on counters, and it looks like uh, Viper's got the tempo. Viper trying to hit the monks. He knows those monks are weak, and now he's got to hit the cannons. And Tato somehow he dodged it, but the shots went right between his cannons. That was pretty cool. But yeah, it feels awesome. like. You know, maybe there's a world where if Viper comes in with only Hussar, that then the Mamelukes could actually be seen in this game. But, Very true. So we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll it, see. It, in a sense, right, if he stops producing the crossbows and goes more into cavalry, and without as many castles to, to bring in the Genoese back, yeah. or bring the Genoese back, then the cavalry line does open again for Tato. So we'll see if he makes that recognition uh, and throws some stables up or just pulls the Mamelukes back in himself. Viper just lost a few. I mean, not a few. He lost a decent amount of crossbows. And Tato just needs to hold this oh. area. And he is making more Mamelukes at the moment. Yeah, four monks go down for Tato on the right side, though, to Ooh. the light cav. And that means the entire right side of the map, where a decent amount of the farming and wood eco for Tato is now kind of vulnerable to raids. We've got four bombards and a treb now on the front side for Viper, looking to start pressuring that forward castle down. Look how patient Viper's been. He's, he could have sent all the light cav here, but he knows that his the next uh, the next generation of light cav can move here. <gasps> Is oh. he gonna find this TC in the back? Oh, there's also a king in that tower. Okay, so he he's, he's now moved on past that. But yeah, Tato's distracted. Big fight in the middle though, and now there's light cav. The monks should be picked off. The monks will not be able to convert the cannons, and Tato's still struggling to push Viper right now, I think. There's 10 total Bombard cannons on the map. Six for Viper, four for Tato. Huge engagement in the middle as the uh, light cab coming from Viper, looking to clear up all the skirmishers, means the monks have to retreat back to the safety of the castle fire, as well as the Bombard cannons. Repairs going into that castle. The amount of stone that... Tato has invested into this as Viper looks to pressure just a bit more. Gets a second castle up a little further back now for a point of safety for himself. Tato making a big mistake here, and it's so easy when you're under pressure to make it. But Viper, Viper's tracked this. It's just your population. Tato has 165 pop. He's making more villagers. It's a huge overboom for Tato. He has yeah. to realize this. Massive overboom, and I wonder if that's, you know, in part a product because he feels like he's getting so heavily raided by these light cav that he's just now cleaning up in his base. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, overproducing on villagers, only 18 military for Tato. Look at the food count for Viper. Remember when it was 55 on wood and 20 on food? Now it's 20 on wood and 60 on food. And he's just, like, giving up his main gold. Like, it's nothing. And he's actually going to just move his relics to the back of his base as well. I like how it, uh, Viper has set up this northern rural farming town yeah. completely <laughs> <laughs> unprotected in the flatlands. Like, that expansion is incredible to me. But again, it just supports the idea that as he goes for the third armor upgrade for the cavalry, he's really going to look to just kind of pull, you know, what I think most people have, have known as the Hera style in late game. 80 plus farms, spam the Hussar into your opponent's base while using Siege to break down in the center. It's, and it's crazy, right? Like he, Tato saw an opportunity to push Viper's castle. Viper's pushed those bomber cannons right back. And meanwhile, Tato's losing everything. And I guess this kind of helps Tato because he already had too many villagers, but it doesn't help that, you know, villagers on stone and, and food have been lost. And it doesn't help that he still doesn't really have a massive ball in the middle anymore. Tato has 80 on wood. Yikes. 
it's 80 painful. on wood. Actually, if he if he loses all 25 of these villagers here on the right side, that's really good for him. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> and there's more there's more running now. Uh, Viper is still the... pushing though. He is, yeah, he's pushing very heavily on the right side. So then again, it it, it you want to look towards the middle of the map to see if Tato's getting anything done. And with just four bombard cannons and nothing else to support him, he's getting he's getting pushed back by five skirmishers. He, he just can't accomplish anything. He's gonna lose his castle eventually here. And Viper continuing. Viper's got Arbalest now on the right. And uh, by the way, Dash, I think he might be like 20 seconds behind me. So if you could oh, somehow okay. speed up, I don't know. I thought, I think I'm at live time. I assume you should be able to get there too. But I will speed up. Let's no, see. I, I, I have a suspicion. I'm not entirely sure. There's just so many different things happening. But the bomber cannons on the left are getting picked. And it's just, it just seems like a big old problem for Tato now. A Viper might not be able to get away with his cannons. We'll see. But Viper, who's relocated his relics, has 80 on food now and is dropping more stables. Are you using uh, capture age or using the game? I am using capture age, so that's okay. why I'm wondering if. Um, if you uh, press, if you press T, T, is there a little control thing that pops up? There is at the bottom. It yeah. says I'm at 36, 41, 42, 43, 44. Oh, okay. It press. Uh, there should be a forward arrow there somewhere. After you press T and click that and see if it speeds yes. up for you. It, it's maxed out for me, which is okay. interesting. If you tab into the game, you might need to mm -hmm. press forward in the game. And then it might God, work for you. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's all right. It, it, a lot hasn't been lost here. Viper's just been swinging back and forth and controlling all the sides. And, I mean, Viper's going to get his main gold back now. We see crazy upgrades like Bavise coming in, which gives his foot archers more armor. But this is quite honestly a game where you just Hussar raid Tato to death. And it yeah. doesn't even Losing feel like... Losing Bombard on yeah. the front, too, it looks like. Yeah. There's just, it doesn't feel like there's any real possible way for Tato to stabilize because he doesn't have defensive castles. Yep, Arbalist with Hussar up against just Hussar and a couple Mamelukes on the other side. Uh, I mean, just, you know, unit, oh, yeah, just kind of the unit disparity in and of itself is too much, I think, at this point for Tato. His saving grace was that mid castle, that forward castle, you know, holding some amount of control. But with that down means Viper is retaking his main gold and can even extend out to the stone and gold that were once controlled by Tato. Yeah, and I, I think we're going to see this be a theme in this series where Tato, he doesn't have as much faith in his own late game versus the Vipers. And so he's going to try and be creative with counter picks, which we believe Saracens was, and then also timings. Uh, there will be a lot of these moments in late Castle Age, early Imp for Tato. And Viper, the thing that makes him so tricky, man, is like he's just he's just so good at defending in, in those types of situations. But he also has it in his locker to be extremely aggressive if he has to. He could do it all. 12 stables for the Viper at this point. Just getting all the... <laughs> The upgrades. Yeah, he's Not also he's just being being as sneaky as possible. If you look at Viper's vision, he could see it pretty much everything. So he's even trying to like sneak a stable up in the right corner now. It looks like where there's some extra gold for Tato. And I mean, Tato's alive, right? He's he's alive. He's in this. He's got some army, but this is Viper just whittling him down. And eventually, Viper will have one big ball. Uh, but for the time being, he doesn't feel like he really needs to do it. Biggest you, problem. You... So oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, you're good. I was just saying. Well, what do you think at this point in the game? Tato's holding on for. Yeah. Um. I think... like. I guess in my head, he's he he still sees some avenue of winning, which yeah. I'm not seeing. Um. I, so a lot of the times, it's really hard to know your pop. That's part of it. Um. You're so focused on reacting everywhere and and whatnot that you just don't. He, he just don't notice it. But also, there is a sinking feeling that he's lost the game, and I'm sure he knows it, but it's your first game. And it's very common, especially in the first game, to play on and work out those nerves, which I think were there for Tato, all because mm -hmm. of the overboom. Him being at 165 vils with more vils in Q is just nerves. So uh, sometimes playing on, like past the point of where you're dead and you have no chance, is actually good for you to just like reset mentally up. Uh, Take some deep breaths and and almost think about you know how you want to approach certain like mechanical aspects and whatnot in the future. Um, totally. 
But yeah, I mean, again, we're going to look at the draft. I do believe Tato was hoping Viper would have a civilization that would rely a little less on archers. Um, and he didn't get that here. And I think it was a good attempt from Tato, but just classic Viper defense. Absolutely. So, okay. So you're, the game's over for you because it's still running for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and have you All been right. able to I'm speed up to in the actual out. game? I, I did. And it was at, you know, quote unquote, live for me in the actual game. So hmm. I've got to figure that out. But okay. So we'll okay. get out of this. Yeah, um, we'll see what happens in the next game. I feel like that's a bug. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we could talk through it. It's fine. Worst case, and again, this shouldn't be a thing, but I could always stream my POV on Discord, but I don't even think that... I, I, I've had no issues in the past, man, so I think you should be fine. But, yeah, Tato, 169 villagers max. Had 224 total Oof. villagers in that game because he had to keep yeah. adding more after losing them, so... Way overboomed. Yeah. Uh, we've got Ghost Lake here, and Viper's gone for a pick that we saw from him in the quarterfinal, and he, I believe, is going to have a change of approach if this goes late game. And he's gone for the Tatars, a sieve that gets more food on their sheep, so he's uh, he's going to go out there and find the extra sheep that are on Ghost Lake, which is a big reason to pick it. And then Tato, he's gone for the Burgundians, which isn't necessarily bad if you can wall up, but it is the first time I've ever seen Burgundians picked here on this map. We'll see. The walls are possible between the wood lines. Uh, stones and golds exposed for either player, uh, particularly Tato, who is going to have to work a little bit harder for his main gold, main stone. The viper stones and golds are a bit easier to lock down, but the main gold's always going to be forward. Are you able to? Uh, were you I able am, to get I'm in, the, in the game, so now I'm curious if we're actually at the right time. Okay, what, like what times it have I'm, you at? I'm at 320, yeah. 21, We're good. 22. Okay. We're good. All right. Yeah. It, it, cool, cool, cool. From what you just said, you're like a second behind, but that, okay. that might be PC. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's, it might be, it might be the previous yeah, game. I'm... The previous game was two minutes for a bit there. And it was, ah! we were all kind of talking about the same unit. So it made, it all made sense. <laughs> gotcha. So it's all good. Gotcha. 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 All right. So yeah, Tatars versus Burgundians, uh, Burgundians second time we're seeing it. Uh, today, after seeing it in that arena matchup between Hera and Leary, I know that you and Dave were talking about how it has been frequently banned mm -hmm. as a civilization. You think that's just because we've now moved up to best of seven that it's kind of become available to people again? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Um, because there's three bans per player. So in theory, you would think that it would be banned out, but I guess there's civs that they fear more. Um, right. I... I personally would have Burgundians as a must pick or a must ban, right? So um, I think again, particularly because of way that a way that the number of the maps here play, where you can wall fairly easily, and yeah, that's part agreed. of why it makes sense here on Ghost Lake. I would expect to see Tato, uh, as pretty much every player does, go for full walls, early eco upgrades. Um, a lot of these games go to imp, and so Burgundians with a, a massive boost to their eco. Yeah, I mean, uh, early on and safe walling. All key. that. So what was interesting with the draft was this was Tata's very first pick. Right. And he would have had the way it works is he gets the final ban and then he gets the first pick and then Viper gets two picks. So what Tato did in his position was he's probably thinking if Viper doesn't ban Burgundians, I will absolutely pick it first. Um, but if, you know, Viper ends up banning Burgundians in the final wave, I've got to change my whole strategy. But I'll tell you sure. what, Dash, like, Yes, Burgundians have been dominant on Arena, and I would take Burgundians over maybe any civilization. We have not seen Burgundians on Ghost Lake, so I think this is another example of Tato feeling like he needs to do something out of the box to beat Viper today. Yeah, I could see that. Whereas Tatars, right, very much a uh, pretty standard pick here. You lo you love the, uh, the bonus on the sheep, yep. uh, especially if you're able to find a few of the extra ones. It looks like Viper did... Yeah, he's got tons of sheep under his uh, TC and still two more to find back at his own base. Yep. This is what you want. And Viper, he's always loved the Tatars as well. All the versions of the civilization. There was a time where I think they only had the additional food on their sheep, but then they didn't get additional sheep from their town centers. Viper right. was the trendsetter playing the Tatars a lot. So he knows the Civ well. Uh, he also knows Tata well, and he'll know that the Burgundians can thrive if walls go down. So Viper's going to go against uh, the grain here. He's going to go for Militia, actually. He's not going to be going to gold yet. 
Uh, but I think it's going to be Man at Arms from the Viper. Yep, early barracks. First militia already out. Second one on the way. And he'll start making his way across as Tato also with a barracks coming up and the walls begin. Yeah, now Tato's going to assume this is scouts because almost every other instance it's scouts. And so he's being very relaxed with his walls. And he also isn't scouting Viper like you would on Arabia where there's that chance. So, right. you know, Viper having been late to gold doesn't actually have his third militia on the way yet, which is sloppy from him. But maybe he'll be able to roll with this if he can just keep Tato from walling up and then follow it up with something else. I'm sure he'll still be happy. And he'll absolutely get there in time to disrupt the swalling. A second villager pulled by Tato to wall, but he's actually going for slightly more aggressive walls to get around this stone. He wants to wall this stone in uh, where he was previously going to wall straight across. But uh, here comes the scout now with the feudal upgrade. So five damage on those hits. Going to start harassing those two villagers. Militia coming in as well. And all of a sudden, Tato's plans go out the window as he has to wall up his wood line individually. Yeah, it's so interesting. Two Militia. I wonder if this was Viper's original plan, but look at the blocking and the work from Viper. And this is the dream start against the Burgundians, right? Because they can't take advantage of their eco to the same level. And Tato actually is out of sheep, too. He doesn't have food underneath his TC right now. So he was trying to push in deer, just thought he'd be able to. And now suddenly he's in the worst case scenario against the Viper. Yep, forced to bring up an archery range close to his TC. Walls off the wood line, so won't lose a villager there. Is going to wall from that uh, archery range to the wood line. Does he get it down in time? He yes. doesn't. The scout gets through. Will the militia be able to as well? Oh, my goodness. Just so much stressful. villager time wasted trying to get these walls up. Exactly. Yeah, just as he stressful. spams down a couple, a couple of farms as well to get that food eco rolling. At the end of the day, though, for Tato, he... He only lost one vill. He's still going to have the Castle Age wood upgrade. And he will be able to push out, or at least defend, uh, you would think, with skirmishers, especially with Viper Scout being weak. Doesn't even bother to finish that wall. <laughs> They're still... Yeah. Okay, there goes the house. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Viper, in the meantime, though, he has been casually walling his base up. Now pulls a second vill uh, from the wood line to bring up a house and complete the walls on the uh, southern side. We've got the blacksmith going up on the northern side for him as well. So that'll be his second feudal age building. Still five sheep for him to go after mm -hmm. as the uh, Tatars from here. He is loving life. Yeah, there's this feeling that you get when you're watching Viper. And for me, it's casting Viper where it just seems inevitable, right? Yeah. And it's these small things that make it feel that way. You give Viper any ounce of control over the game and he's normally going to use it to to get max value. So I'll be curious here. I mean, Tato lost the first game. It's a best of seven. So very achievable for him to lose two straight and come back. But mm -hmm. I just want to see what, what Tato's eco looks like, what his mid game looks like here, because this is a true test for him here at the start of the series. Yeah, Blacksmith coming up for himself as he uses his skirmishers to push away the militia. Should be able to complete his walls at this point. Uh, Viper continuing to produce archers, though, as well. Uh, not really sure, I think, exactly what uh, Tato's going to do at this point as mm -hmm. he doesn't have a scout forward anymore. Uh, an issue I run into with the Tatars, now someone like Viper, that he plays them a lot more and, and understands that balance, but sometimes you uh, rely so heavily on the sheep that by the time the sheep run out, you don't have the farming eco. And the farming eco is what you rely on over the long run. So Tato not having the sheep isn't that bad. He's got Castlage Wood and farm upgrades. He's on 12 farms right now. He isn't fully walled, though, and he's just waiting in front of Viper's range. <laughs> he doesn't know if Viper has one archer in there or 10, which is the max. So it's important Tato tracks this. Because if he doesn't track it, Dash, I mean, if Fletching's in, Viper will destroy Tato's army. Tato's not making any more skirms. Look at this, though. Tato, now with time on his hands, goes for a completely different wall setup true yeah. much larger to the to the far wood lines in the north where I, I have to imagine he would have originally gone to his initial lumber camp wood line yep. with a wall we'll get this market up i believe as well and then it's a race to the castle age and then viper hasn't moved out at all and he's expecting skirm so he's adding a stable but you know the scouting so interesting here right because if viper had a full hp scout he would actually be checking to see how many skirms Tato had and if Tato had upgrades. 
So exactly. Viper's actually, he's assuming there's going to be a lot more skirms than there actually is right now. You wouldn't actually need that stable. It's not going to hurt, but it's not necessary, at least based on what I'm seeing. Absolutely. But that being said, he's still the first to click up to the Castle Age. Probably going to be 30 seconds to a minute ahead of Tato, just because Tato is light on gold. Should sell a little bit of that wood to get up. Uh, Castle Age play for, for Viper. You think it's straight into... Uh, crossbow upgrade, but then transition into knights to deal with the skirms or siege. Well, I think if Tato has if Tato has a sizable number of skirms and he's starting to make more now, you can push it before Tato has armor on them. So there's a window there, particularly with the Tatars with thumb ring. Um, also, you know your Tatars, and it's a it, this is a map where we tend to see it go late. So I think. For Viper style, he's probably not going to add the second range. He's probably just going to add the town centers. But, you know, some other players might be tempted to go forward siege. You can fit it next to the barracks there and the gold if you wish to. That's a good point. This map is tough uh, to bring kind of forward buildings just because of the icy patches. So yep. you have to you have to drop stuff very close to your opponent's walls if you want to make it happen. Does bring the archers forward, though. Starts pressuring the front of Tato's base. Only sees three skirmishers at the moment. Yeah. So you know he's racking his brain. Are there more behind that? Is he continuing to produce in that archery range that I saw earlier? More walls coming up for Tato. Wants to buy time knowing that he's likely behind on the way to Castle Age. Oh, Viper's so annoying. He's using the scout and two militia to try and break through the other side at the same time. So Tato's got a big problem already. And if those units were to break through, it could even stop that rewall. So lots to pay attention to. Tato, you're not in Castle Age yet, but Viper doesn't have his upgrades yet, and it could be a trap. Yeah, the walling ending up working in Tato's favor as he brings in all of these skirmishers. It's Feudal Age upgrades versus Feudal Age upgrades. Even though Viper has made it to Castle, he gets a little bit overzealous wanting to get in and do damage with his earlier Castle time. So still looking for trades and... Might trade about evenly, but not what you want as the player who's first to Castle Age. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what's good for Viper is he still has some pressure here, and now his opponent won't have a lead skirm. So uh, it's unlikely Tato will ever go for a lead skirm. They also opened up the other side dash, he killed that villager, and I, I could see exactly what Tato was thinking there. It's just unfortunate that Viper still somehow came out on top there. The response from Tato is to turtle up. He drops two town centers and a monastery in his base. So he's going to look to expand out to the sides while playing monk defense. I'm sure we'll see a siege workshop not too far behind when he's got the wood for that as well. Yeah, he's expecting Viper could maybe send a knight in. Now, Viper, again, he does a lot with vision. So he sees the monastery and will know that there will likely be a monk. And he's even bringing his scout. In. Look, Tato's trying to housewall that. He doesn't want Viper to see any of this. That's how valuable the scouting is. And Viper Scout should really die. There it is. There it goes. These militia, though, still being alive. It's just amazing uh, <laughs> how much Viper can get done with units that, that don't deserve to be alive still. <laughs> also, I want to show you what Viper accomplished with this scout. If you toggle on his Fog of War with Alt-F, he okay. was able to scout a lot more than Tato was. Tato hasn't seen some of the sides of the map, too. So Tato's going to have to defend from this army. And then eventually, he's going to have to move out and scout those areas. Yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal scouting. Sees essentially the whole map. Now he's going to rotate over to the right-hand side of Tato's base. This is where it'll be revealed that he did go for a third TC over on this side. Checks it with the knight. This is a, an epic TC. So many people, when they're under that initial pressure, they drop their TC in the safe area inside of their base. And then Viper would just be picking off villagers from the other side of the wood line. But the TC totally. actually protects Tato uh, and all those villagers there. And it's given him time to still consider Elite Skirm. And he's actually going to start grabbing Relics right now. He's going to grab the Relic in his base for now. But Relics are always a really important thing with the Burgundians. How did the militia, the militia went outside and got rewalled out in the same <laughs> spot they were earlier? That's too funny. Too funny. But yeah, they'll continue to pressure as that monk does go to pick up the Relic. Three TCs booming at home for Viper. Even in villagers, though. Uh, yeah. for both of our players here and definitely pressure has stalled out and again given distance of the bases although i say that siege workshop going up on the right hand side here uh for the viper so he wants to pressure that really brilliant tc out of tato i think of the timing right right now tato's getting elite skirm he's got monks to convert any knights viper has this is the time where 
if they were to meet with their armies, that you might start to favor Tato's army. So it's interesting that at that time, Viper chooses to mix something else into the equation. And he, he sees the situation here. I think he senses the monks are behind there, so he's just going to run. And Tato's going to get excited. And, oh, he might even convert the cab archer there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm -hmm. Gets away with uh. it. Gets away with it, Viper does. But, yeah, the transition into some cab archers. Well, he's not building anymore. So he produces three cab archers. Yeah, and then and just stops. It feels like the cab archers are on monk patrol right now in the middle. That's all they're out there for is just to stop uh, Tato from getting the relics with those monks. <laughs> all right, so they, they do eight damage. How much health does a monk have? How many volleys do they need to hit? 45? Mm. They, need to, they would have to hit two full volleys with all of the arrows hitting in yeah. order to kill them. Feels achievable depending on how where yeah, Tattoo is. That's that's toeing the line though, man. I would yeah. want <laughs> six cav archers. Let's hit one volley. <laughs> well, but he's adding a, he's adding Viper another. Part. So there you go. Okay, okay, here we go. Um, but we've got the mangonel out. We've also got a scorpion on the way, uh, which I love against skirmishers. Let's see where's he going though, because he's actually rotating it back towards the middle of the map. Oh no, hmm. just taking a weird path through the ice. This okay. is so Tato's thinking, all right, I've got my army. Now we get relics. This goes late. He's not expecting Viper to pressure. This is very interesting timing here for Viper. A thousand percent. Yeah, you can see the entire military of Tato, skirmishers and monks moving out to secure relics on the left hand side of the map. As yep. soon as this there you go, first mangano shot comes in. Let's see how Tato begin begins to respond here to this pressure. Now, at the same time, you could argue that Viper has split his own focus on control. So Tato can, you know, reasonably hold for now, might need his own siege workshop. And, you know, to get that relic and then, you know, get things together either to try and focus on Viper. But Viper's going to run it with the knight. I found a couple skirmishers and Viper's kind of looping around these monks and skirms in the middle. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, he's circling. He's yeah. a shark right now, not a Viper so much as a shark. Uh, one monk with relic in hand, three more in support, and a pack of skirmishers. We'll see if it's enough to to kind of punch through. The mangonel even rotating over. Viper definitely looking for a cheeky snipe here on this armor or on this army rather, but still putting pressure on the right hand side as well as he dropped a fourth TC at home as two. Oh wow, Tato, th this is such a good addition. He's actually gone for Cavalier here, and he converted both the Viper's knights, so he will stop this push dead in its tracks. He will lose a lot of skirms, however, but I think even Viper's Siege and Crossbows on the right side will be in jeopardy soon. Oh, Tato is so happy with that. I mean, one brilliant idea to to tech into the Cavalier. Completely unexpected, I think, for Viper. But then both of those conversions, as you called out, on the Knights, rotating over now to take out that Mangonel and the three Crossbows that are pressuring his right-hand side TC. Tato, complete initiative now in Castle Age, goes for a fourth town center himself on his front gold that was but awesome. does find himself down 15 bills so so viper quietly created a, a vill lead granted it is the burgundians so yep. you know i might even argue the eco lead is still in favor of tato just given the upgrades yeah it's possible right now viper only 600 resources ahead uh tato ahead with food and wood right now but viper it, what was interesting there, Dash, is he didn't actually run with his mango and three crossbows. He let it sit there. He want, It is almost like he wanted that to be dealt with so he could just have time to drop his castle. Maybe I'm giving him too totally. much credit, but that's what it felt like because we know he has the the movement speed to be able to dodge there on the right. Yeah, he, he had the time and the option to move those, those things back. It neglected to or decided not to. Gets yeah. the castle up to protect both his exposed stone and gold on the front of his base. We see Wheelbarrow, we see Light Cav, we see Bloodlines coming in for the Viper now. Yeah, Viper defends there. Tato had actually gone for Atonement to convert Viper's monks. And unfortunately, he didn't get the monks, but he's still holding this position. It's awkward he can't stay here forever because he sees the castle, but at least he knows that that's where Viper's castle is. Interesting game here. We see Cavalier, yeah. we've seen... Cav Archer, Skirmisher, Archer, Monk. Uh, the only thing we haven't seen is like a Spearman, right? Because I think we've seen Militia. <laughs> so. You're right. Actually, we, we've not seen a single Spear on either <laughs> side of the map. Uh, but we've seen everything else. Yeah, with the Keshiks now coming out. A couple of conversions there for Viper on the Cavalier. He also has Camels out in response. Did you happen to see Tato versus Yo game one? 
Uh, uh game one. It, yes, I did. Uh, but you'll have to remind me the Civ it, match. Well, I'll just I'll just get right to it. It was on this okay. map, and it was Tato all in castle, and he just went crazy, and he ended up losing the game. But Tato loves in these positions when he has a right. healthy eco. He loves to flood the map with army first, and Viper, and like Hera and Leary, some of those players, they prefer to go up to the next age. So this is a big moment for Tato. He's going to break into Viper's base. And Viper only has three Cav Archers, two Camels, and one Cavalier. That's it. He's nothing yeah, in his base. If that's the style you want to play, too, Burgundians is the best Civ for that. Because you get to play with Imperial Age upgrades yep. in the Castle Age. Yeah. So these Cavalier are absolutely pumping damage out. They're going to eat through this barracks, open a hole into the Viper's base, and... Sure, he's got four TCs back there, but a lot of his farming eco is in danger of going completely idle due to, uh, you know, Cavalier with plenty, plenty of anti-arrow uh, armor. Yeah, I, I, it was interesting decision-making there from Tato. He said, okay, I've got enough. Let's actually go Imp as well. And he might be able to steal these relics. He might be able to get all of these relics back to his base right now. There's three in that monastery. There they are now. Come on, Tato, try and take the relics home. This could be so I important. Gonna, I was going to say, right now he's valuing putting about 20 to 40 villagers idle in uh, the Viper's eco <laughs> just by having the, the Cavalier running through there. Viper's Viper's Keshix are going to try and find those monks. He saw it, so he knows. But I think it's nice for Tato to at least take them closer to his own base right now. Oh, man. Conversion attempts... Keshiks could all be converted. The monks, if they survive, could still take relics across the map. Viper will kill most of the monks. Viper's idle time's been pretty insane. And then on the right side, we've got a fight. And I think Viper will probably lose there. I think Tato will get a castle up on that gold there, Dash. Interesting. Okay, I'm definitely behind you again. Really? So something's happening. Yeah. Okay. Because he's moving out for that castle right now. Um, so I've somehow slowed down. Oh, well, I'm 36 minutes. So are I'm, you? I'm 35. Yeah, uh, he's moving out. Yeah, he's moving out to place the castle right now. I can kind of tell just because you said that. The but... only thing I'd say is if you go to the settings in Capture Rage, you could try and turn off the uh, higher graphics, maybe. Uh, or you could use the game itself, and if the game itself is syncing, I I'm not entirely sure. Might yeah, maybe be... I'll just cast with the regular UI from yeah. here on out. That's so fine. Can or we can we can make it work if uh, I pull up you know my POV on Discord too. We can roll with it. So, Tato, unable to get these relics just now. They are relatively close to Viper's base. you got to think Viper's going to get him back. And the first thing Tato clicks is Paladin. So, he's going to be two minutes away from getting Paladin. He's got 27 cab right now. Probably a good time for him to fall back and not take any engagements. Gold on the right side for Tato. More stables going up. He doesn't really have a defensive castle at home yet. But I'm rather unconvinced with Viper's army count. I mean, Viper, maybe this is part of his plan, but he's only got 13 army at the moment, so he could be pretty exposed against a Paladin raid. We got Conscription now for Tato, so he'll have more production speed. And Tato will see the gold on the... No, he doesn't see the gold on the left. Viper's well aware... Wait, is he? Yeah, Viper is aware that gold is there. So Viper will probably want a castle there at some point too. As Viper stonewalls the right side here. Really scared of these cav right now. Okay. I'm just switching back out of capture age. So I'm catching back up to you now. Okay. I think I'm live. Castle just went up on the right hand side for Viper. Yep. Perfect. Pushes the cav. Yeah. Pushes the cav away. Great. Yeah. So, and you could press the little flag icon too to show the vil count at least. Regular game casting's rough, but it'll show it in like the middle area. Yeah. Yeah, I've got something at least. Okay, so, to, you know, okay. Tato, Tato's going to go for this. He does not believe his civilization could last all that long against the Tatars, it, it seems like. And he's massing Trebs, and he's going to try and raid Viper right now as Viper is just waiting for upgrades on these CA. But, like, to me, with the way Tato's approaching this, this is going to be one big ball, one big fight for victory, and not a long-term yeah. thing. Tons of Paladin. Yep. Slowly rotating them all over to the right-hand side. He's got one Treb out. I would like to see him with at least two, if not three, mm -hmm. before he actually moves in to put pressure onto uh, Viper's Castle. Moving forward to drop additional Archie ranges as well, just also creating a little bit 
of some like structural defense for himself as he moves his trebs up into no man's lands. Uh, so Viper is going to try the same composition that he had used against Jordan and lost. He's going to go heavy Cav Archer and elite Keshik. So this is double gold So unit. gold heavy. Yeah. yeah, so gold heavy. Granted, the Keshiks, I guess, give you a little bit of return, <laughs> but... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this they is interesting. Okay, remember, Tato, he chose to castle the right first, and Viper's making him pay now by killing some villagers. And then both players are going to see the gold on the left. Tato sending Paladins there to deny Viper's TC. So this is all great resource control for both players right now. Absolutely. Yeah, he's looked, he looks like he could potentially deny that TC with just the two Paladin. A couple of stables going up for Tato forward on the left-hand side. He's not seen. Does he see those two stables on the top? Yeah, he did, he did notice he it. Okay. And Viper was able to complete the TC in the left. We're going to see a castle from Tato there as a counter to it. And Tato's going for the push with the Trebs. And it will be Skirms as well. Viper, if he could just defend this, if he could just take out the Trebs, I think I'd prefer his position. But let's see if he can. Yeah, he splits into two groups for his Keshiks, looking only to target the Trebs. That's his sole goal with those Keshiks. Gets one. Another down to half health, but the Paladins in a full surround Ooh. will prevent. Ooh, does get a second one right at the end, but one Treb still up means that castle will continue to be pressured. Lots of stone being invested by Tats or by the Viper into keeping that one up. And, you know, this is the issue with double gold comp. First off, it's expensive, but, like, if you have to buy stone, you're not going to have the gold for that. And then you also rely on your castles, and you might not have the castles if Tatsu can continue this push. So great job from Tato here. Taking out castles on this map in particular is a huge win for you. Yeah, first castle goes down. Viper bringing back his heavy CA from the other side of the map. So he's got 30 in total, although a bunch go down in that engagement against the Paladins. Has to regroup, has to remass those really expensive units in order to be able to threaten the Paladins on entry. Kashyyyk's cleaning up a few of the skirms in the back before they retreat. Tato looking for his next target. Man, I feel like every other player would just go Hussars and Cav Archers. And just, you save so much more gold. <laughs> the Keshik is a good unit. Guess what he's doing now? It's costly. Oh, is he gonna? Is he dropping stables somewhere? <laughs> he's, he's, he's got. He's he's producing light cab oh, in those northern go. in those northern stables, and he's getting uh, another. He's getting scale barding armor right now, so he is starting to you know increase his cav tax. But it looks like he's realizing as well that uh, it's a bit too expensive a composition for him to maintain in the long run. He needs to find another option. Takes another engage on the southern part of the map, free firing with those heavy cav archers, taking down with a few of paladins, but. Kashyyyk's getting melted as well. Yeah, I mean, Paladin's just a better unit. And Tato, for the time being, has a lot more gold income because he has both the neutral golds. He has the one on the right side, which he's almost finished with, and then he has the one on the left side that he gained with that castle. So, I, in terms of long-term comps, though, I do believe in Hussar Cav Archer more. Um, because Silk Armor is a crazy upgrade, and Viper just completed it. it adds a lot of Pierce Armor to his uh, cavalry, like the Keshik. I think it applies to the Keshik. I think. Yep. I it's think at it the very least, it's to the light cav line and the cav archers. Um, so, and, and paladins for the Burgundians, they don't have bloodlines, which eventually yeah. catches and, up with you, and that extra HP is so important, usually. And you you can see the difficulty in the, in the you know, army v army straight up matchup, yep. uh, that he's getting pushed back by the Viper now on the right-hand side. So the question becomes, is it about rotating your pressure? You know, you've got that castle placed on the left-hand side, maybe producing some trebs and just forcing the change of battlefield mm -hmm. could be the answer. But he retreats all the way back to base. Viper also looking to regroup. I'm looking for Siege to see who's going to make the next move. Yeah, and you have to be so sneaky with it. By the way, look at what Tato's done. He's made a gate in the north. So he, <laughs> he trapped them all he in. Trapped, <laughs> he trapped the light cab in and is going to somehow deal with that, which is funny. Could actually accidentally open his own gate there, but... You know, that is brilliant. <laughs> I would not have. I would have just sent units there, and then like have would continue to go into my eco. Absolutely. So absolutely. <laughs> that's that's a whole bunch of wood, a villager that just went completely moot due to twenty five stone in yeah. a villager's time. That's amazing. That's and, such a high level play. <laughs> and like in the moment too, to think about that is unbelievable. Look at Tato now though. He's concerned yeah. about this cav archer ball, and so he's hoping to line up castles all along the map. And he will have to sacrifice some paladins here, I think, in order to get this other one up. But he will have one, two, three, four, four castles 
all spread out around the map, whereas Viper's got three, and they're, they're kind of in the middle of his map. Yeah, he, Viper's castles, I will admit, are very well placed for defending his main eco, though, because yeah. they kind of, yeah. they do protect all three points of entry, uh, whereas for Tato, there is kind of on the right-hand side. If Viper at some point ever gets that Hussar mass or mm -hmm. like have mass up and wants to raid, he has a point of entry kind of on the eastern side of the map. We'll see if he discovers as much, but he is pressuring that castle on the west with two trebs up top the hill. Yeah, and you can tell... And this is, I think... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, you could tell Tato wants to get there, and Viper's just following him the whole way in. He's trying his best to pick off the Paladins as the Paladins run in, but Tato... I think he saves the castle here. I think it's... Ooh, actually. Oh, did he get these two shots off? I think it goes down due to ooh. these two shots. Yes. Sent the Keshiks in to clear up the four villagers that were on repair duty while the Paladins will take down both Trebs and a number of the CA. I think uh, Viper will take that because as we mentioned, we prefer his army composition in the long run. So Absolutely. just opening up that space in the map, re you know, getting access back to that gold on the left-hand side, that's big for him. Yeah, so Tato's got to be, he's got to be swinging sides here and showing up with Trebs to take out castles. But, oh, man, the Tatars and their late game, so good. And, and you know, Viper's not spending uh, gold on Keshiks anymore. He's just going to make the Hussar, and it's easy to make when you've got 3,000 food and a big wall of stables at the front of your base. Very, very easy. And, yeah, and the fight taking place close to him means he's happy to reinforce. Keep kiting back with those Cav Archers. Yep. 33 in play for him. And now we see uh, Tato teching into uh, Pikeman as well. So he's really feeling the pressure now, going to complete trash uh, composition. It's kind of funny. Viper's stables are in the north are still producing. And when Tato engages against it... Oh, my God. Tato engaged against the Hussar. And the Paladin moved underneath the gate. And so now the Paladins are just chasing that Hussar. And Viper's going <laughs> to kill the <laughs> kill the Paladins, which means his stables there could still maybe do something. <laughs> I love it. Until then, it's just a, a zoo, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, stone walls coming down for Tato on the left-hand side. Man, he is, he is settling in <laughs> for a wood game at this point. Seriously. He's just going to wall up, prevent the raids. Oh, man, but it's going to be so difficult, Dash, because he doesn't have Paladins anymore. He's out of gold, and your farmers do bring you gold income as the Burgundians. He did research Burgundian vineyards. Okay. But it's not as... It's, you need large numbers of the Paladins to ever be able to touch the CA. Viper, by the way, was healing some of his Cav Archers. No, his he opened castles. the gate! Which gate? I don't even know which gate we're looking I mean, at. Oh, sorry. Tato's, Tato's gate in the that middle. Gate. I mean... <laughs> Tries to rush down a siege workshop. A couple of uh, vills gonna go down, and now these uh, these hussar gonna make a mess in Tato's eco. Tough to clear up. He doesn't have any military back actually, and he has no military buildings aside from a few stables really at home to produce. So he's gonna have to be sending pikemen back or skirmishers back yeah. from his uh, from his military buildings on the right hand side. It's interesting. Like he will he doesn't even know about that dash because he is looking at the front where he took out one of Viper's trebs. And now he's trying to take out another important Viper castle. And he's got skirms and he's got halves. And Viper's finding it very difficult to get in close to those trebuchets. That's a good point. Yeah, so it's Tato making progress on the southern side. But now it's kind of a race against time here uh, in terms of will his eco allow it? He, yeah. yeah. He's floating quite a bit of food and wood. So he's in a comfortable position where actually Viper, looking at his resources, he's pretty strapped right now. He's, he is. He's at the limit. And, and it doesn't help when you have to use some of what's left of your gold to try and buy stone for the castle, but it is also absolutely worth it for Viper to try that. He's using one of his own trebs, and then when he can get the Hussars in there, he will he will try to. And he's also done a great job with his Cav Archers to still split up in Tato's base, but Tato's also kind of pushing that away. And Tato still has one more treb. I think it's every volley you're hitting with here is still so valuable, even if you don't take out the castle, because Viper's sinking so much into repairs. Yes, back down to zero stone. He's going to have to purchase again if he wants to keep this castle up or take the treb down. He mm -hmm. finally commits enough Hussars to the treb, able to take it down and force a retreat out of Tato. Back over to Tato's base. Looks like he's finally dealing with the remaining Cav Archers that were in his eco. Yep. 
but Vildra count down to 106 for Tato as compared to the 131 for the Viper. So if the Viper can extend the game just a little bit, I think we're going to start to see kind of the the resource stores of each of these players start to swing the other direction. Yeah, I, I mean, Viper will have three relics, and he is finishing off what's left of that gold. But that gold, there's only 1,200 there, and Tato is, like, fully stonewalled, almost, anyways. There's, like, maybe one or two gaps. So if Viper doesn't have Trebs, he might not be able to run in with Hussars. And eventually, in, in theory, Dash, I think Burgundian Vineyard farms should be better off in terms of long-term gold, I think. I, I would believe that, especially with two relics behind it as well, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they really yeah. only have to, they have to eclipse a one relic differential at that point. Yeah, to it should be easy to do that. From, yeah. a, from a gold perspective. So, yeah, I think it is. It's uh, for Tato. It's kind of just apply enough pressure to extend the game to the point where Viper exhausts the natural gold on the map. You get into a largely trash battle, but with Tato a little bit more gold available for things like Bombard Cannons, which he has one of in the south. We'll see if he can protect it as we see a slew of Hussar come in from the Viper looking to clear it up. Can he get through Ooh. each of these Halberdiers and into the back line? Does just that. We'll see the Bombard Cannon go down. And once again, we're stalemate. Yeah, and it's it's so tough. Like, a lot of people at lower elos look at uh, certain army comps and they say, Cav Archers, why not just make skirms? Albs, why not just make skirms? Um, but, like, it's so much easier to have a Hussar versus no Hussar because you could pick those positions. And yes, the skirms are vulnerable. Um, Viper's yeah. going to take advantage of that. And then the CA or Viper's own skirms could always mix in as well. But, you know, here's the thing Tato's buying time to stabilize his economy. He has walls and Viper does not. Viper is going to break through that freaking gate in the north. <laughs> is he really? <laughs> oh, the, actually, yeah, that one, finally. That, that gate, yeah, <laughs> not like the an important gate. I was but... like, he's going to break into the eco. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but I mean, Viper's Cav Archer Mask is at 13. And okay, that's pretty that's dwindled. pretty low, yeah. Yeah, as he throws another 20 Hussar out of Bombard Cannon in the south, we'll clear oh. it up, rotate back to... Now I'm looking at wood lines. That's Seriously. basically what I'm looking at because the Viper is... He is the one who feels a little bit more claustrophobic, right? Yes. He does have access to wood on the left-hand side, and that castle up on that hill is going to be a saving grace for him, I think, in terms of opening up wood lines. But he's essentially out of wood mm -hmm. in the southern mm -hmm. part of the map. And so Tato might just be able to constrict him out yes. of the game. And it would be a huge win for Tato. I feel like it's a bold statement, but I don't think if he loses this game, he could beat Viper today. He's got to tie this up 1-1. Viper's just too good. And the Burgundian late game, that, that trickle of gold should mean that he should be able to continuously mix in Siege over a long period of time here. So Viper yeah. sees another Bombard Cannon, and he feels the need to go in for it. He will absolutely do so, and he might kill it, but it's at a heavy cost, and he needs wood. And right below this whole, this whole fight here, Dash, we've got like 30 villagers for Viper running out of trees. Man, the final Hussar gets the Bombard Cannon with his dying breath. Uh, but you're exactly right. You see about 25 villagers working on two trees mm -hmm. uh, as he tasks all of them over to the left-hand hand side of his base. Uh, three Trebs, though, in the north. Look at this. Viper quietly building up a force Ooh. on the northern side of the map. He wants to change the point of pressure. He wants to be on the front foot for the first time. Also, four elite Keshiks in tow. Those are expensive units, considering, again, our conversation around lack of gold. He's got 1,300 in the bank. But that's that's it for the Viper outside of Relic Gold. Tato notices this. He notices it. He's got Hussars running across the middle of the map, but I think Viper will get it. There's no masonry, and it's just the amount of pressure here at just the right time, just when Tato is getting excited in the south. That's a good move for Viper to try and peel Tato away. And Tato's got to be careful not to chop that wood line. He gets um, one of the Trebs, is working on a second. Viper packs up as the castle goes down, does protect the second two Trebs. Wow. Moves forward to now just target the walls. He wants to break in, create another opening for this Hussar raid. So he has to protect these tre Trebs from the incoming Hussars long enough to make that happen. Yeah, and at this point, uh, Viper is officially out of gold beyond the three relics. I did just check the resources collected a moment ago, and Tato is, is about the same amount of gold. So... It, he hasn't felt the real benefit of vineyards yet, but from here on out, we should see 
vineyards pay off for Tato in at least making Bomber Cannons and Siege. It, it, the units, though, he doesn't really have a crazy gold unit that he can justify. I think Paladin's still kind of out, out of the question. And what a game, dude. This is so cool. It's, it, I love Ghost Lake. I know that some people are like, oh, it's just, you know, it's just a closed map. They're just going to wall anyways. But the late game awareness the players have to have on this map is beautiful. Yeah, I love this. I love this. As Viper takes a big group of Hussars and sends them to the north, trying uh, to raid, gets walled out. Tato does the exact same thing and mirrors him on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, yeah. And now... Brings a group of Hussars in. Look at Tato. Tato saw the traps. He's like, I know they're somewhere. And he's trying... But Viper's repairing with everything he's got there. And I think Viper will actually keep those Trebs alive. What a ridiculous wow. sequence here. Those are the two most valuable units in the game at this point. Absolutely. Uh, for the Viper, without a doubt. And even putting repairs into them does cost him gold. He gets stone walls up on the right-hand side. Rams! We've got basic rams coming in for tato on the south side let's go yeah i mean might want to click the capped ram upgrade there tato but i still like his position and i think the key for tato well first off you could maybe take the trebs again as viper's gonna make house walls around them um oh but the, my goodness the key for tato is finding that one area and he's just found it where viper doesn't have a castle that would like yep. that is where viper is gonna hurt the most and tato needs to pressure that yeah, Viper trying to rush up a TC on the far western side because he makes the same realization that yep. he's super vulnerable to raids uh, for his wood lines. Still a lot of pressure on the southern side here. Viper holding out. But I think that at this point, Tato knows that we could sit in this, this game state for the next hour, but he will win if yeah. nothing changes. Yeah, as long as he is really smart on conserving his wood, he seems to have more wood available, and he's got more to for more fortifications. So Viper's really yep. going to have to cling to those two trebs, maybe even turn it into like a third and a fourth treb. And then when he's cleaned up a raid in a certain area, because he, I think he has the better army comp, then he can suddenly move in and devastate Tato and, and take out his castles. Exactly. Your, your capped ram tech is in, which means that this push is actually threatening now here on the south side of the map. Hussar spam for both players. We got the Halberder spam on the side of Tato. Just trying to keep those heavy cav archers at bay. Yeah, it, in these types of games, Tato will sacrifice hundreds and hundreds of skirms to kill five cav archers. Like, you're going to see instances where he will click skirms forward to their death and only come out after killing one CA. But it's, it's kind of worth it because the cav okay. archer costs gold. Back to the north. Two more trebs forward. Oh, he's got one cav archer to try and stop the walling. It's not quite enough. And I actually love Tato's move. He brought a pack of just five halberdiers over. Yeah. In case the chop happened to deal with the influx in the chuck uh, in the choke point rather. Yeah. Of, interesting. Uh, of the hussar. So great defense, great recognition by him while he continues the battle in no man's land in the bottom side of the map. Yeah. You know, a, a small problem for Tato could be that his stables are actually all on the right. So he, okay, he's baking a couple stables in the middle now, but he doesn't actually have reinforcements that close by. And Viper's through. So Viper is through. There was a hole in Tato's wall. He didn't complete it. Viper will lose one trip, and I think odds are he might even lose the second. But he is starting to harass Tato, and this is allowing him potential to push back in the south here, Dash. Yeah, pulls a lot of uh, Tato's focus to try and defend that and push it back. Commits a lot of his Hussars to the top side of the map. Means he only has Halberdiers really to work with mm -hmm. on the bottom side. Both players completely at their limit. The single remaining Treb of Viper moves forward just another inch to try and break through the walls yet again. He realizes that he has to put some damage into Tato's eco if he wants to turn the tides of this game. I feel like, you know, these Keshiks, if you can keep these guys alive... They should be pretty valuable. The fact that you get gold when you fight with them. Yep. They're in. They're <laughs> in. He chopped as well. They're into the eco. Let's see what kind of disruption they can create. They're going to do battle with these Hussars. Oh, that's they'll gonna... beat the Hussars too. Yeah. Like Plenty you, of gold generation there. If you raid with Hussars here of your Viper, it's great, obviously. Your Hussars are slightly better. But Keshik is way better than the enemy Hussars. So that means Tato needs more military population there. And you could tell Tato's panicking with a couple rewalls here or there. And Tato's population is dropped here, and Viper has allowed himself time to stabilize, expand farming eco where he needs to, and I mean, yeah, what I'll... a great job from him to somehow get in here after everything he's been up against. 
I was going to say, I will admit, I, I, if I have to call out one minor mistake for Tattoo, I think it's not recognizing how important that Treb is and actually just committing just to go some, find something it. to kill it. You yep, know, yep, like, yep, yep. I would almost let 20 of my villagers die to the raid if it means that I get rid of this Treb because that's really the thing mm -hmm. that's, you know, preventing him from creating safety in his eco yet again. A couple Paladins produced, though, so it looks like he's looking for a little bit of punch and power here uh, from the base to push back out and stop the pressure that Viper's applying. And while I say that, go back down to the southern side of the map. We've got another bit of a raid here from the Hussars of Tattoo and three Trebs moving Ooh. forward. Oh, that's huge. I was just going to say, it looks like Tattoo's falling apart here, Dash. He's not pressuring Viper and Viper's pressuring him. But if they both start to lose castles, this gets very interesting. Absolutely. And and it's just three, three Trebs to one means the pressure is infinitely higher on the Viper right now yep. in terms of the rate at which these buildings will go down. Also, earlier Tato invested in mason masonry after a couple of his uh, castles go down. So yeah, that Burgundian castle should be quite strong there on the front. Castle goes down for Viper. Completely open now on the right-hand side of the base. He used to have the holy trinity of castles to protect his base, and one of them goes down. Yeah, this is almost like a scenario now. Uh, I don't know if there's any CBA fans watching, but like... It's a scenario where you're pop capped, you only have so much army, and you need to prioritize where you send it. Look at Viper. He has to bring army from defending his Treb now to take out the Trebs from Tato, which in turn gives Tato more of a realistic chance to take out said Treb, but also has more of a realistic chance of losing his Trebuchets at the same time. So it's really tricky. All right, 10 Keshix swinging in for three Trebs. Halberdiers in defense. How many go down? That's the big question. I, I think... One goes down. I think, the, I mean, the Keshiks die here. I think we know that. Well, he only gets one of the two Trebs there. Ooh. But he is in. He's in to Tato Zico with a huge force as the castle goes down. Yeah, the Halves will get some really nice hits, though. Viper runs right into them. And the, the Treb is also advancing further forward. And yeah, I guess Tato did lose all of his Trebs there, man. It, it just really feels like Hussars... And Cab Archers is just so much more dominant in these positions, doesn't it? Absolute insanity that Viper is alive in this game, if I'm being <laughs> honest at this point. Yeah, yeah. Running out of gold as long ago as he did. He's doing all of this with a single Treb. I know. And he has <laughs> kept that Treb alive. He's Look, the Treb is running all the way back to the castle from which he was created. Yeah. I've done my job. <laughs> and Tato's so busy and so distracted, he can't find it. But I think he's looking for it now. I think he's headed over there. This is funny. Yeah, he's on the way, way to that castle. Let's see if Viper house walls it in again. Saving private trebuchet. <laughs> I mean, it could also be for an eco raid. There's tons of farms here for Viper. Yeah. And this will serve at least as a reminder to Tato that he needs to be pressuring here. Oh, wait, the treb. No way. No, Tato Dude. misses it. <laughs> he, he pulled a noopsie doopsie right around him. Like, what on earth is that? <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay, that's behind enemy lines over there. We've got a bunch of skirmishers about to go down on the southern side to a a pack of hussars from yep. Tato. Again, we've kind of we've kind of stalled out after we have. Viper was able to punch through that castle defense. He did retreat, looking to regroup, and now it kind of looks like a lot of the forces are rotating over to the left hand side of the map. Aside from these hussar raids from Tatcha that continue to hit the farming eco for Viper. I, I don't know if this was intentional for Viper. I, I doubt that he thought it this far through, but I think what's really helped him is his his stables are in the middle. Also, Treb is going to go down no. to Tatcha's hussars. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, uh. But like, if you think about it, if Viper needs to go to the right, it's the same amount of time for him to go to the left. And Tato's trying to build up production buildings in the north now because his his buildings just haven't been in the location where he can conceivably fight on this corner yeah. anymore. And that's like, it's a bit of a problem for Tato because while he can raid the open bottom side of Viper's base, Viper doesn't actually have eco there anymore. I was going to say, I love that call out too, particularly because uh, Tato's the one who has to build the halberdiers, right? Yeah. And they're the slowest moving unit in response to both the cav archers and the Hussars. So relocating a few barracks up to the top side of the map means he can respond a bit quicker to any of that cavalry pressure that comes in. We, we are. We're resetting battle lines now to the northern side of the map, it looks like. Also, I still, I mean, I, it must be because Viper sold a lot at the market, but I'm looking now. Uh, 23,000 gold collected for both players. It's almost the exact same amount of gold has been brought in. 
That's pretty crazy to me. I would have thought 80 farms with Burgundian Vineyards would have, yeah. would have had more of a payoff by now, but maybe we just have to wait a bit longer for that. You would think. You would think. Still Hussars streaming in from Tato. He totally recognizes on both sides of the yep. map that he just needs to keep putting the pressure onto Viper's Eco. Cav Archers forward for Viper. Double Siege Workshop for Viper as well. Looking Tars? to invest in some rams, it looks like. I think the Tars get Siege Ram, and that, that's a big, big thing to get here. So we might see the point in the game where the only gold that you spend is on Siege Ram, and mm -hmm. th that is a late-game tactic that players will use. Viper losing villagers. He's going to drop down to 100 here. I was going to say, he does have 10 in the queue, so he's aware of it. That he needs to up his vill production a little bit again. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you said, like, okay, there's the Siege Ram upgrade. So he is teching into Siege Ram as well. Now it's about producing and mass producing those Rams on what little gold generation he has from the two relics. Oh, and man. some Keshiks. So, like, the army composition for Viper is superior. Him losing villagers has simply freed up population space for him to have a hundred army now. Mm -hmm. So in, if Tazo can defend from this, Tazo should have more resources in the long run. But this is also the type of spike that Viper could finish the game on. Totally. Yeah, it's it's it does seem like it's coming down to one big defense out of Tazo. Drops three siege workshops of his own in his base. He's also banking gold. So Tazo is now up over a thousand gold in the bank. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, where we're going to see... Viper run out of steam in that regard, and if uh, if Tato can get the right gold units out, we might actually be able to see him turn this one once and for all. Yeah, Tato also not taking any wood in the north. He's only taking wood in the right side, so Viper could eventually raid there. I mean, if you see... Okay, he's doing it now. I was going to say, if you start to see Tato panic, he'll he'll make Paladin again. Uh, because he doesn't feel like his army's strong enough. Mm. So I like the decision from Tato. It felt like very necessary to get something else out there. Yep, yeah, we got plenty of Paladin on the southern side, but we have the Siege Rams officially working away on the barracks in the north. Mm -hmm. Viper, is, he hasn't had the southern corner really locked down, but it's just his army movements everywhere. The group of Cav Archers has 180 kills. That one group of 22 Cav Archers has done so oh much God. damage. Yeah, he's done an incredible job uh, keeping those alive through the late game. 90 farms for Tato. He's no siege now, so it's just still trying to stabilize and hold. I would, uh, if I were Viper, and he's kind of doing it, I would get extremely bold with all new villagers and try and chop the forward trees where your uh, siege rams are as much as you can. Oh. Just to get what uh, you can so you don't run out. Gotcha. Yeah, just just playing into the, the idea of a wood game. Yep, yep. Uh, I feel that. I feel that. Three sea drams now, now on the in the north here for Viper. What? I mean, he has a massive army. This goes to your point of having about a hundred military units on the field. Yeah, Tato's going to have to find a way to break that. Paladin might be enough power. I think if, if he you has have, a big enough pack. If you've got twenty Paladin in a mix of Hussars, I think you can win that. But fifteen. Uh, it's just, it's it's so tough. And you can tell Tato doesn't even think that he can take it. Viper yeah. wants to take the fight. Tato has to take it, though. And now we're feeling the lack of military buildings on the northern side for Tato. Look at these halberdiers and how much distance they have to cover just to get to the fight. So mm -hmm. most of the paladin go down before the halberdier arrive in tow. The crazy Quite a battle, stat though. Here. The crazy stat is that Tato has more population currently. Right now, he's got more population. It might even out. Viper's meat shield is gone, and it's just the Cav Archers and some Skirmishers that remain. Holy cow. Yeah, four Siege Rams still working away inside Tato's base at this point, but the Hussars finally find a moment to get over there and oh. take them down. Viper, I mentioned a scenario trick. Look at him. Viper used to play scenarios when he started this game. He's put one Hussar underneath the gate. He ran in there when Tato was leaving. And so he's holding the gate open, and he's got Hussars in the back of what Tato thought was safe economy. What a play. Yep. Hussars and, importantly, a couple Keshik, creating gold with every every whack of a villager. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Let's ideal see. unit to fight too, right? Because exactly. they don't fight back. Oh, man. Hey, that got him enough for two more Siege Rams in production from this uh, Siege Top, dropping more stables as well and closer to Tato's eco. Wants to keep flooding those Hussars, make things difficult. 
Now, in now it's starting to feel like Tapto's the one restricted, you know, yeah, like for, for all the constriction that we were talking about around wood lines and things earlier, Tapto's running out of space. And and it's it's so it's such a tough thing to stop. What do you do besides not leave your own gate? You have to leave your own gate or he's going to run in again. And then it becomes this cycle where you're patrolling halves in your own farms. And that's great. It kills the Hussars. But then you have pop space in the back corner. And then Viper can push elsewhere. And I think Tato's realizing that, like, the Viper with Siege Ram potential is just going to keep switching sides on him. And I don't know how Viper's gotten here exactly, Dash, besides being the best late game player possibly we have. But it's been masterful. The one thing I will say is that the Cav Archer numbers are slowly dwindling. He's down to 19, and he... Although I say that right as he sold, he must have used the market because he just queued up like eight to nine Cav yep. Archers. So I think he realizes the same, that actually victory is predicated on keeping Cav Archer numbers up because if if Paladins are in the fight, he mm -hmm. needs Cav Archers to, to put the damage into them ultimately. Yeah, I see some people saying revolution for Tato. Uh, try and click the button, as we say, and turn all that eco into military. The second that happens, Viper falls back to castles, and that's the issue. If Viper had no castles, it could work. Viper having cab archers yeah. in castles, I think it, you know, Tato wouldn't be able to win the game with it, and then he'd have no economy anymore. And Yeah. Oh, uh, man, Tato, Tato's just coming apart at the seams now. He's having to put so much of his focus into saving his eco that now, with, again, three siege rams in the southern side of the map, Viper is cleaning up all of those production buildings. It's going to become impossible now for, for Tato to even keep up with the spam, mm -hmm. let alone the positioning on the map. Yeah, seriously. And he is trying. He's trying. You never want to just react the entire time. So he's trying to rate a little bit, but it feels like every raid just gets put to bed. And Viper, happily enough, to just use a couple siege rams and take out the productions. And I mean, Tato's done everything he actually can do with the Burgundians here. He's got 90 on food. Right. Like, you've got Paladins right. and everything. I mean, th this is everything that he could have tried. But Viper seems to have yeah. just a little bit more he's... and seems to know exactly where to go every time. He, he may have 90 on food, but he's got 200 in the bank to 4,700 food in the bank yeah. for the Viper. Yeah, and that's, that's what happens when your units just don't die, right? Yeah, exactly. And the the Hussars and, uh... and the Cav Archers are so strong. Earlier, I said he was down to 19 Cav Archers. He's now back up to 29, a ball of 29 Cav Archers Ooh. supporting everything. A big raid for Tata, though. A big find. This is the first time Viper hasn't tracked an army headed to his eco. He has not reacted either, Dash. This He's hurts. down to 85 villagers. This hurts badly. He's down to 80 villagers even at this point. He spams a bunch, so he now realizes as he garrisons, garrisons Vils into TCs to stop the raiding. But he's completely stalled out food production in those moments and had to spend about a thousand just to replenish the vills. He still has quite the force pushing on the bottom side of the map, though. So the question is, is the momentum that he's built up enough to carry him through? And does Tato have the time to respond? Yeah, and can he can he just get a unit that kills the freaking Cav Archers, man? Like his Hussars just die before they ever get close. And then the Hussars from Viper are just so much stronger. 1,700 kills, 1,100 units lost. And Viper's lost 111 villagers in this game, so he's only lost 1,000 military units, which is crazy. Oh, it's so tough. It feels like Viper's going to have the time to be able to get his population up again and fix his economy. Uh, my concern is production buildings at this point for Tato. Yeah. He's lost so many. He basically is relying on stables. He has a few barracks remaining in his base, but it's yep. primarily Hussar spam at this point. And that's just not enough. Yeah, and, and wood could become an issue very shortly for him. He will be out in the right corner. And, I mean, the farming eco is also behind this castle. If Viper breaches this wall and takes out these stables, it does feel like it will be over. You have to somehow stop the 110 army count from Viper. Oh, my God. Woo! Oh, just a giant blob of yellow consuming your territory. One last ditch effort. That's what it feels like here for Tato. And it, and it feels like he knows that as well as he's amassing units behind this castle. As many Paladin as he can afford. Some skirmishers, some Halbadir. A full mix of units. He's going to pressure the Siege Rams away and take a few down in the process. Two out of the five going down so far. Those are expensive units. And Viper does rely on them to actually make progress in his push. But look at all of those Hussar. It's like a swarm of bees, man. <laughs> ah! uh, and if 
the sad thing is you have to send your units to their death because if you don't, Viper will, he will just raid with them. He will run in that gate again when one Hussar comes out and then you're done. So Viper's just going to switch focus. I mean, he's also, he's going to mass Rams and Hussars on the other side. I could see him break through at any moment. Tato doesn't have the population to deal with both sides. Only one and, and that's not even, that's not even the situation. He can't deal with the other side either. No, not in the slightest. Can you imagine being one of these villagers on the wood lines at the front of Tato's base, chopping through 20 wood, and there's like two Hussars <laughs> standing on the other side of this? They must be getting a bonus wait, or something, dude. Wait, I would stop. Wait a minute. You're, you're literally like, that guy's going to kill me if I keep chopping through this. <laughs> well, they didn't really have a say, I guess. They're going to die. It is, the GG They're going to die one way or another. Wow, what a game. Tato feeling the pressure. Man, what a victory out of the Viper. I mean, just incredible understanding of how to play momentum and positioning on the map, mm -hmm. right? Just continually switching his angles of attack, making sure that he's got enough production buildings on both sides that it makes it easy for him and it pulls Tato out of position in doing so. Raids throughout the game and that hero treb, man. I, I honestly, I think his control over that treb won in the game. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. Well, think about what happened. If you go back, I'll do it with Capture Age here for the viewers. You go back to 55 minutes, um, Tato has the better castle positions. He's got a castle on the right. He's got, he had two castles along the middle. He has a castle in the north. And you look at those things and you think, hmm, Tato also has more wood lines behind. Tato also gets gold from his farms. This could be good for Tato. And somehow Viper just, the way he shifted back and forth was so good. Felt like his cav archers were always where they needed to be. And, uh, you know, on a small level, it's hard for me to be extremely critical with how Tato played. One hour and 40 minutes, it was a grind either way. But on a small level, this is also why players always pick civilizations that are beastly in late game on Ghost Lake. Um, that have yeah. incredible Hussars, right? Uh, that have fully upgraded Skirmishers. That have Siege Ram. Burgundians do not have fully upgraded Skirmishers. They don't have fully upgraded Hussars. They don't have Siege Ram. Those are some basic things. And there's other civs that we've seen, like the Chinese. I guess they don't have Hussars, granted, but... Um, you know, the Chinese, the Poles, uh, these are the civilizations that we have seen because they could do so well in late game. And so for Tato, if there's any regret, it's actually not winning the game faster here because I think right. he knew the longer it went that the Tatars would probably be favored. Wild game. Crazy. Absolutely wild game. I can't even imagine from just from a stamina point where you're at right now as True. a player, True. you know, off of that, you had said it midway through that game. You feel like this was an integral one for Tato to, to pick up. If he wants to take the series, finding himself down now, Oh, two against the goat. All good. Well, uh, Viper, he's up two nil. He's up against one of his best buds. And is he going to take it easy? Nope. Uh, he's going forward with the Mayans here and he's hoping to lame as Mayan should do, Inca should do, Aztec should do when the settings allow. Uh, fortunately for Tato, Viper hasn't found that boar. And so we'll see if Viper finds any sheep or anything. But Tato with the Lithuanians here, even with all that extra food, he's still trying to push in the deer. And Viper, you're being so annoying. <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious. Also, my capture age crashed right as I said that. Oh, so that's that's fun. <laughs> well, sorry about that. It's all good. We're just that's in dark okay, age okay. here, so yeah, I think Viper would be just way too crazy to steal the boar. We do generate them to the sides of the back, and the eagle does run slower than a scout, so stealing that one's probably out of the question. But Tato pushing in deer against Mezzo could be seen as questionable because typically you want to find all your sheep before that eagle could come forward and steal them. We'll see. Uh, deer being pushed in. We've got the boar coming in now as well. Viper did get a glance at maybe how much Tato had on wood. And the tricky thing about the Lithuanians is they can go for a crazy scout build. And we've also seen crazy archer or man-at-arm builds. My favorite build, a build I've since tried, a build that you guys should go rewatch, was Nikov's build against Vinchester on Arabia. It was 18 pop man-at-arms fast archers. 18 pop was insane because he did this. He pushed in all this deer and then uh, he actually had his barracks as his second Dark Age building and it was it was a lot of pressure. Somehow Vinch won that game. Still can't believe it. All right. Into the game. I think I've caught up. We're at four minutes. Yep. Four minutes. Okay. Sweet. Yep. Just saw that. Uh, deer get pushed in by Tato. 
on the side of the Viper. He took his eagle forward, correct? So just now getting back to his base, we'll look for his final two sheep, which won't be too hard to find on the back of his base. A pretty Mine good map for... I think Viper's map is great if he wants to protect his wood lines and his food, but you do need to rely on gold. And Those both golds of his are golds kind are of forward. brutal. Yeah. Yeah, and and near a bunch of hills, right? So yeah. if for whatever reason Tato wanted to be aggressive, he's got great positioning to drop siege workshops, monasteries, and the like. With Lithuanians, you have to assume he's going to want to go into those knights and monks. Yep. As well. I know Tato. And he has a very safe gold in the back. Yeah, I mean that gold's perfect, and he's actually going to go uh, for the mining camp before the mill. This is going to be fast archers, most likely. Based on what I know of builds, man at arms isn't achievable here. But Tato, he can be aggressive, man. Like he beat Yo because of his aggression. Yo was the better late game player. Didn't matter. Tato won three two. So uh, I like this approach from Tato. I like how he has gone for a pick like the Lithuanians versus a pick that would need to play in towards walls or something here. And he's up to feudal on eighteen pop. Meanwhile, Viper has four villagers in the queue. Yeah gonna be super relaxed for viper oh look think... at this he's going for tight walls you see this he's gonna go wall towards his tc and this wood line here so he's gonna wall himself out of his own golds mm -hmm. yep look for a very small base knowing that he's probably gonna take a lot of pressure and feudal bringing in his final boar right now but that means that he's gonna have to create his own opportunity to get to his golds later on right mm -hmm. he's gonna have to find a way to fight out of his own base and make that happen it's really important though that tato knows where the golds are because at right now, if I'm looking at Viper's base, I'm like, oh my god, he's got the best base ever. There's probably a gold back there. Because this gold is so bad that mm. Tato doesn't see it. And Tato is trying to annoy Viper as well, luring in a deer here. If he just continues to go a little bit more to the right, Tato, see the gold, bro. See the gold, because this could influence your strategy. Doesn't see it here, Dash. So, I mean... No, oh, skirt man. around the outside. Yeah, good point. Now, he's definitely... He's definitely thinking. Yeah. I'd, I'd be he like, hit. are you kidding me? I'm down two games, and Viper's Gold's going to be back here? Okay, he hits Feudal, though, so with more vision on his scout, once he comes back here and sees the berries, he'll realize, okay, there is no gold back yeah. here. Where the heck is it? Yep, exactly. And then he's like, oh! Now, fortunately for him, if he brings archers forward, he will probably go directly towards that but it's funny he doesn't see a single gold from viper it's not like he sees the secondary no he yeah doesn't see a i'm, single I'm like half surprised he doesn't you know type in chat like <laughs> you sure you don't have a bugged map yeah you want to read <laughs> like do you realize you don't have a gold viper okay does he see it here as he crosses back across the front of the base of course he doesn't oh, oh my god <laughs> He sees that one and he's like, wait okay. a second, that's four tiles. <laughs> okay, he'll get it here. He'll get it here. He'll get it here. All right, all right. There we he see goes. it now. Okay. okay. Uh, archery range up. First couple archers in the queue. Still just two villagers on gold in the back, so he's not going to go crazy production there. Yeah. Plenty of sheep, though, underneath the TC. So he, he I mean, Tato's feeling good, but also Viper hasn't received any pressure. Just yeah. now arriving to the feudal age with his tiny little base, and he's going out to that gold now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you got to play to the map, man. We've had some pretty brutal Arabia generations, and the Mayans haven't actually played out all that well on Arabia because Mayans are a slower buildup. They normally build up behind walls, and when you can have exposed golds, I remember Hera having that exposed wood against Leary, for example. That can affect the Mayans and how they want to play. Great job gotta, from Tato here. Yeah, engagement between the scouts... But in feudal, the cavalry wins. This reminds me. This reminds me of uh, like 2015 games. Tower right away. Preemptive tower. Be extra safe. Ooh. Nobody preemptive towers anymore. Nobody. But I think you kind of have to here. Yeah, I, I I actually do. I I hard agree with this with this tower. I mean, I, typically, right? The case for not dropping your your tower first is that if Tato brings four vills forward, right? He could drop it on that hill that's now mm -hmm. south of the gold. Yep. And you're you're lacking the stone to counter. But that's quite an investment of villager time for Tato. And he's actually unaware that that tower's even there yet. So I think he just caught a glimpse of the foundation. Oh, did he get least. it right at the end? Okay. Yeah, so he saw that. And he also sees an additional eagle. But yeah, I mean, he didn't see the range. 
So he's going to want to do something with his archers. Uh, Tato just now getting Loom, by the way. That's how confident he was that Viper wasn't going to be moving out aggressively. Wow. Five archers coming forward with that scout in the lead. We'll see what they can get done. I mean, with these tiny walls, maybe sit behind a wood line. Mm -hmm. Both both wood lines look rangeable as long as we have fletching. So we have the extremely safe wood and berries map versus the extremely safe gold map because the berries and the wood for Tato could be concerning if there's range units in the long run. Yeah, I think I'd prefer the safe gold map. I think so too. Because <laughs> <But, laughs> this aggression allows you to protect those other things a little bit easier. But look at the micro there from Viper. He actually dodged to the left with the villager, so it didn't take any damage. And now he has skirms with fletching. And Tato's scout is weak. And Tato's like, why did I even get upgrades? Why, why do we, we even go. make army against this guy? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to go on a hike yeah, across the map and back. Luckily, he didn't over-invest. He stopped production of, um, of archers at home. Just mm -hmm. has two in that archery range as he brings his stable up now yep. as well. So going to look to get some cav out on the map, get his farming eco rolling, and move towards the castle age where the Lithuanians really want to be knights, monks, possibly siege forward. This is, this is actually incredible, Micro from Tato. Very easy to have lost all your archers here, especially because it looked like the pathing was a bit awkward. Um, one scout and... All of Viper skirmishers will be pushed back. But this is the game since the players play with Dash. Tato is going to fall back. Viper will naturally know it's got to be scouts coming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in archers behind it. So they don't overcommit at this level because they know what they're vulnerable against. And it will be interesting to see if Tato has the answer for it. Yep, Tato does make it all the way back to his base. He's got his, his nine archers. First scout or second scout just now coming out. Oh man, Looking I like engage on the skirmishers. He will clean this up. Yeah, and I I was saying that Viper knew, but I'm not sure he did because his archers almost look like they're sneaking now. And he, I don't think he was expecting this number of archers as well from Tato. A lot of players would have stopped the archer production, and Tato did not. Yeah, and Viper, I don't I don't even believe he knows that this is fully walled off, right, on this side, because this hmm. is where he had that scout engagement earlier. Correct. So. Correct. Gonna look to pressure the walls. We've got a market going down for Tato. Love to see it. Looking to accelerate himself up to Castle Age. Would you even consider selling your stone since you've seen the Viper drop the tower? Um, and you know that he doesn't have the stone for Castle himself? Like, for TCs? I think you could sell 100. Right? Because, like, I think you could sell 100 and then buy the food and still be up. If you can get away um, with not selling all of it, you're okay. Oh, boy. This is a little sloppy, though. Uh, these three archers. I guess Viper finds value. That's our first villager pick. Okay. Yeah. Vil goes down. He's able to push the scouts away, too. Pretty phenomenally, but up to Castle Age we go. You are exactly right. Sells 100 gold to make it happen, or 100 stone to make it happen just a little bit sooner. And this will be a, a, a fairly solid Castle Age advantage yep. for Tato. Absolutely. And if he has the eco for knights, there's always a question with these uptimes on if you can have the eco for a lot of them, but he could just be diving Viper's Tower. Um, I, I still, though, would like to see Tato get crossbow and bodkin. I think there's a lot more value in that because of the wood lines. And ideally, pick off some. Like having the crossbowman means that you could pick off any monks or spearmen that Viper might make later. I agree. I think as long as as long as he lives right with these nine uh, archers yep. uh, up to the point where he hits Castle Age, I would absolutely invest in crossbow uh, bodkin early, harass those two wood lines for the Viper, and then come forward with a couple knights. Yep. Uh, looks like he's got a messy wood line over here as he has to move a couple skirmishers over to push those archers from Viper away. Those three archers have actually really gotten a lot of value, it seems, for yep. the Viper. Viper's done a really good job here, right? He's going to be later to Castlade, so he has to defend again. But again, because of the map, Viper, thinking a little creatively, he's going to go for the double tower approach. Again, not something you see every day, but if you get a gen like this, you probably have to go for it. And look at this small move here, Dash. The weak archer that's probably going to die anyways to a sneeze... That has distracted the skirms, and the other two archers are going to peel away. Oh, man. That kind of, this, like, this is kind of micro that makes me angry, you know? <laughs> yeah, it makes me, Cause, makes cause, me angry cause as, as well. a player, Because as a player, when you're the guy controlling the skirmishers and you've lost, you've lost track of those two archers, you know they're coming back as crossbows later in the game. Absolutely. And you know they're going to pick up like five unnecessary kills on a wood line that you don't ever hear the, the sound for, the alert for. <laughs> yeah, it is... Um, 
well, while all that is true, I also think Tato will be kind of kicking himself over that. He's Lithuanians and skirms are faster, and he, he knows that Viper is going to be, you know, having that tool within his locker. So, wow, uh, Viper knows he needs to be ultra defensive. He's on to stone, drops a second turret around that gold, wants to be ultra protective because he knows that 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 gold is his lifeline, right? Yeah, yeah and um, dude, it's like. The game tried to say, hey, Viper, have fun with this, you know, like life mm -hmm. threw him lemons or whatever. And uh, he's going to actually turn this into a really reasonable position. He will have the economy to drop town centers. He will have more crossbowmen than Tato. And Tato had to sell his stone and everything to get to this type of position. But Viper goes straight into university. He wants ballistics, crossbow, bodkin. He's looking to micro his way out of this kind of tough position that he's mm -hmm. in. Just yep. this, you know, he needs to create space and he thinks that micro is going to be the way to do it. What do you make of the Siege Workshop? It's kind of a conservative placement from Tato, given that he's the one who has pressure and the crossbow advantage, just now matched by yeah. the Viper. I'm a little surprised that that Siege Workshop's not going up on the hill in front of the towers. Yeah, I think, I think he expected to find damage on the other side here, and he was unable to find any. And when he got there, he then knew that he couldn't freely send the villager forward because Viper could spot it. And it's just a tricky mm. thing. Like, I could fully understand why Tata would want to go in there and, and expect damage. But Viper had defended from it nicely. Now Viper's getting ballistics, and he's in a position where he knows he can't actually be damaged all that much by Tato, so he's going to push forward. Yeah. You remember those two crossbows? Oh, they're on the wood line. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't get any kills because Tap does a better player than me and <laughs> noticed immediately, right? And pulls the bills away. But I'm like, there they are again, right back to where they were. We've got monks coming out though. The the advantage that Tato, the big advantage Tato has, Ooh. right in the early in the early castle time, as he gets a nice manganel shot onto that pack of crossbows moving forward. Let's see if uh, if the Viper can micro his way out of this one and even take the manganel down. He will trade. Three to four crossbows for the life of that Manganel. First relic coming back for Tato. Now another monk already on the way out to the north-hand side to get a second relic. Yeah, and 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 relics are really important if you're going to be massing those knights. And just important With for dying game. breath, he gets it into the monastery. Tossed it through the very narrow window. Through the window, yeah. <laughs> shattered, shattered the stained glass. Worth to get it. The, uh, to get the relic in. Worth it. <laughs> Well, oh. you know, I'm a little concerned for Tato's army momentum here. You know, he, he needs yeah. to micro his heart out here on the backside. He does react he a little late. only has plus one armor against this pack of crossbows, but he's looking for it with his three knights and a scorpion. Yep. Should be able to clear this up, I think. Yeah, that's true. The scorpion's in a perfect spot to get some hits there. Oh, nice. Yeah, huge. And now the, the, the crossbows are prioritizing yep. taking down the scorpion, which means free hits for the knights. Three more knights in reinforcements. And now we've got six knights and some momentum. Another scorpion coming out. And so we'll look to see them move forward. But I think you're going to need a mangonel if you want to pressure the archery range in those towers. I think that we could actually see guard tower from Viper in this game. Because all this pressure is going to come in around this gold. He has a TC on one. He's got double tower on the other. We're definitely going to see insane Viper micro. And he's going to micro down more than one mangonel here. If he's going to continue on in this game. But... Yeah. Interesting. It's just full macro for a player who had such an exposed gold. Suddenly he's got two golds protected. And Tato's still one TC all in here, trying to kill fast. One TC all in, two relics. So he's got plus two on his knights. He's got the first armor upgrade as well. One Manganel produced. He needs to get it moving forward so he can start to create that pressure because, as you mentioned, it's a 10 vil lead for the Viper mm -hmm. currently. Three TCs pumping out bills as we speak. Uh, listen, I don't want to come off as too much of a fanboy here because I'm a fan of both these players, but just the small things today, Dash. Viper checking with his Spearman. He's been here for a minute, and he was checking to see if there's a Palisade wall anywhere that he could break through because he's trying to sneak. Yeah. Like, that that type of thing there, I don't check with the Spearman, and so I don't know to bring my army back home. I Instead, now, I just show up there with the crossbows and find the houses. Uh, welcome to another episode of Dash's Useless Stats, but I'm pretty sure that's the first Spearman Vipers created this whole series. I I think that makes right? sense. <laughs> I actually think it, I think in game one and two, he played entirely yeah. with ranged units. He built some militia, right? But I don't think he ever built anything in the spear line. I could be wrong. Maybe wow. chat will correct that, me. That's but... true. No, I think you're right on that. And man, Tato finally getting to a position where you feel like he could snowball this one. He's going to try a siege workshop. The spearman dies now. He 
He just offs himself, but okay. Viper. Crossbows, crossbows coming up. Will they look to just snipe the villagers or retreat when seeing all those knights? Looks like they're in full retreat mode. Manganel doing a good job to pressure them away as well. Yeah. Oh man, and oh, Kethos gonna have to pack repair of too. Though. Oh, true. There's crossbows everywhere. I mean, it's gonna be so difficult for Viper to micro this. The knights are gonna do a lot of damage because they're Lithuanians. And Tato was repairing the mango. Viper sniped the repair villager. However, Tato is killing all the other crossbowmen here from the Viper. This is crazy engagement. Yeah, it's just, I don't know where you put your focus at these players, but I think Tato's coming out the better for it as another pack of knights comes in from behind. We'll clean up the rest of these crossbows. Viper now finding himself in a pretty big military deficit. Yes, the numbers are kind of, are fairly even 11 to 15, but the value of each of those units, knights versus crossbows right now. I'm for telling Tato you. means he's finally... Got, finally got his foot on the gas and and he yeah and he put he goes full throttle here dash he's got so much attack on these knights and he does not want to allow viper with the cheap crossbowman to have time to mass more of them he dives in the kd's ridiculous right now but tato needs to he needs to kill eco as well here remember because he's 20 villagers behind right now but uh, yeah, it's a really good point it's bye a really good point Viper will be happy with a military for military trade if it doesn't leak into his eco. But this mm -hmm. is uh, this is Tato's opportunity. Going to take out the monk first, but then he's got about nine knights looking to put pressure into Viper's eco. Nothing in defense other than TC fire. I'm telling you, guard tower upgrade would actually be so good right now. I think he it can afford it yeah. too. Like it costs wood and I think it costs wood and food or wood and stone. He doesn't have gold. And all oh, man, Viper's going distracted. down in the back. Yeah, and he's got the knights coming in in the middle as well. So there's just so much going on. Tato finally finding the kills that he needs. Yeah, he's about to pick off about 10 villagers in that engagement alone. Crossbows now coming back in defense. It's going to take him a while to clear up all of those knights yep. as the towers start to go down. And then gold control. We're going to start to call gold control into question. Only the TC guarding that small patch of stone in the south. Market coming up for Viper as well with three villagers as well. Needs to balance the eco. Lots of wood, lots of stone. No food, no gold. Tato has plus four attack on his knights without a single attack upgrade being researched. What a great oh. game from him. I mean, the aggression oh, in Feudal so didn't good. work out, but that much attack, man, it's left Viper almost speechless here. Viper doesn't know what to make. No, and no. He the makes right the town unit, center. But... That's oh. what he makes in a response. Yeah, another TC just for wood control and to expand a little bit. Yeah, we got 10 knights on the front. Whew. Yeah, three monks as well. He also built a cav archer because why not? I like the second TC for Tato. I feel like you've done enough. And you're at a point now with 59 bills where you can continue to produce and also add the town center. Absolutely. He does have a bunch of idle knights back at his base that he needs to send forward. I don't know if that's just new stables that he oh, didn't true. set. But he's got six knights that he's not using for pressure. Yeah. And while, yes, as you say, like he's done a lot of damage and can feel good about that, he still is in a 30 vil deficit. So if you give <laughs> Viper breathing room, ooh, rushing a castle up as the mangonels rotate around, Tato gonna find it, brings in the knights. Is it enough? <laughs> Viper commits the entirety of his civilization <laughs> building this castle. <laughs> That's 50 villagers. Yeah, and I mean, even <laughs> if Viper gets the castle up, suddenly he might not have an eco lead anymore. Tato will That's love true. this. Man, Tato's That's true. playing so good here. He doesn't even get the castle up. No way. He doesn't even get the castle up. And the TC's at the bottom of, of the hill there, so that TC will most likely go down pretty quickly. And, and these mangonels, look at the crossbows. spot they sit in. They sit just out of range of both TCs and underneath the castle, bringing in a third and a fourth mangonel. This is Tato's game to take right here. Hold this position and keep pressuring these TCs from the Viper, and you will starve him out. Yep, he's got 12 knights. He continues to flirt with attacks underneath the TC. It's at 69% this castle for Viper. As Viper tries to use a couple of hills to build it, tries to use a knight he converted, to take out the mangonels, but Tato converts it back. Yeah, 13 crossbows and a dream for the Viper here. He's gonna have to do something spectacular against four mangonels. He throws a few more villagers at the problem. Let's see if he can get it up 75% on this castle. Still so much to go. 80%, the vills are ready. Tato will see it, but Viper hops back in the TC, and now vills from the other TC, surprise. And Viper's gonna complete it, and Viper still is a villager Ooh. lead. How does Viper still have a villager lead after losing I don't know, 40 man. villagers?
I don't know. He cut, he gets away with it, gets the castle up, but still only gives him access to that one, you know, that one gold spot. Yeah. And while, yes, he has an eco lead, Tato's got a ton of gold in the bank. So if he just starts transitioning into farming eco, I still see him beating Viper to, to Imperial if that's what he wants to do. Yeah, I think the, the risk here is you can no longer, you have to always be doing significant amounts of pressure to Viper. If you're not for a second, he counters. Yeah. And so this is. I like to put pressure onto the, the archery ranges, right? Already yeah, taking down like one. Too. And there's a few more. So just threaten those production buildings. Viper is still going to look for that counter attack that you're talking about. 23 crossbows going forward with full upgrades oh, aside from the armor. And I'm looking at Tato's economy, Dash. Look at all the bills. <laughs> those stone, the stone. And he's moving out to wood in the middle of the map. He has no idea. He's not tracking these. I mean, I'm sure he has a sense that there's got to be a counterattack coming in because he doesn't see any archers on the front. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh, but he won't see it yet. And the, the archers arrive, the crossbows getting picks on the stone. Three, four, five vills go down, six, seven. And now we're on the run. We're retreating forward, actually. We're retreating towards our army. I like it. <laughs> True, yeah. It's a, a new age retreat, you know? <laughs> the offensive retreat. <laughs> oh man, and, and I mean, I just keep looking at the amount of resources. 22 on gold for Viper. Almost enough stone for another castle. 32 on food. He, he can't take his main gold. He lost. Like, that castle almost never went up. And yet, he's starting to make some spears here. And he could be thinking about pikemen soon. Absolutely, yeah. Second and uh, third barracks. Fourth, fifth barracks, actually. I take that back. Going down. These crossbows, however, will melt. And Viper has tried to do attack move multiple times. And he's just always trapped himself. The cliff. The best cliff Tato could have Ooh. asked for. Yeah, that's a that's 20 plus crossbows going down and we have 20 plus knights now moving to Ooh. the other side of the map for tato i'm sorry to interrupt but tato has been making outposts wondering where viper's eco is and viper's placing a castle to, so he can get gold Ooh, knights over yeah and the knights, knights coming spotted over spotted that yeah oh that's big that is huge that's huge we'll see if viper can get a few pikes over here yeah, no pike. No, not upgrade. in time because all the rest. Look at this. Tato bringing. He knows how important this is. All three mangonels cross mapping. All of the knights coming over this way as well. He realizes, hey, if you've got a castle up on the right hand side, I can't touch those TCs. Why don't I just rotate all the way over to this farming eco that you've set up on the left hand side of the map? And Viper's going imp here, but you know that means one of his town centers isn't producing villagers, and Tato is on four TCs. And Tato will absolutely take that fight. Oh, you always you... take the fight there. Before Viper has Pikeman? Huge Oh, yeah, absolutely. Player. Massive fight for Tato. I don't like the Imp Click. I don't like the Imp Click if you're not going for uh, the Archer line anymore. Mm, yeah, could be tricky to, to get value from it, right? It feels like at least Pikeman would have been Yeah, helpful. I'd rather those resources going into Pike and spamming Pikes at this point, right? Yep. He's only produced, he's got two in the queue. Two in the queue. And he... you're on your way to Imp. What are you going to do when you get there? He had 15 Pikes there. Or, or spears, I should say. And he spears. took the fight yeah, yeah. before Pikeman, but a lot of that's Tato just applying pressure all the time. He's and just he not resting. And he only has first armor upgrade. And remember, Tato has plus four on those knights because of the relic pickups. So they are just melting through those pikes. Knights beat pikes, except for in mass. Yep. And and it's also the cost effectiveness of it. I think when you oh. look at the KD, you can say that it's it has been worth it for Tato to only spend gold this game. Everything he's made has been gold, and he is just destroying everything he sees. Viper's going to arrive to Imp, and he's going to have 12 army. That's not going to be enough to push this back. And, and again, he can't buy anything. The, the resources that went into Imp could have been the second armor upgrade and could have been, you know, 20 more pikes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he thought maybe that Tato was on his way up to Imp. Again, if I was still in my crossbow line, I get it, because I want to get to Arbalist and just start using my range. But I think that was a miscalculation from, from the Viper, thinking that he had, uh, you know, kind of outlived the pressure and with his eco lead could go up to Imp. You know, playing Devil's Advocate, it is okay. more valuable to get Halb than it is to get the attack upgrades or armor. In terms of the damage output, when you okay. take fights... Like, the, there's fair. a big jump between Pike and Halp, so maybe that's what he went for. He did click it instantly here. So he is okay, going to have Halp. So we'll yeah, see. So, all right. Let's see. Let's see. But he's taking fights again right as the Halp comes in. Okay, now Tato recognizes he's going to look to move back. Yeah, Tato's got to be thinking, oh, God, I, I, I can't take bad fights because 
I, I haven't clicked back, up to imp yet, so back, he's just continuing to, the right -hand side. to make scorpions. Viper trying to rush another castle down, but right on top of an outpost. Tato even polling the villagers to slow this one down. As the knights rotate over, he's going to look to stop yet another castle build from the Viper. 45%, no protection for these villagers. There's no way it goes up. I, I don't think so. And now Tato has surpassed Viper's vill count. He's got a lot of scorpions. Viper realizes the castle won't go up. But this will get interesting because Viper's going to have 20 halbs soon. And yep. it, and Although, look at all these scorpions! Yeah, true. <laughs> Tato, I love it. Tato's playing brilliantly this game. He, yeah. he's, he sees the threat. He knows he's got to just build some counter or response to that. And, I mean, it's the perfect one. It is. I, and I've said this when Jordan lost to Viper in the 3-2 as well. It, this is the only player who has a chance to win this type of game with all these losses is Viper. The only one. True. This is, this is the most classic example of what Viper is. <sighs> Is He's pushing it back. Able, He's going to get this castle up. Is being able to come back from crap like this. Yeah. Spe like, I mean, it's spectacular that he's still alive, right? And you could say Mayans as well, to be fair. Like, Mayans have always been that sieve that could somehow just pull a win out of the out of the hat. But, oh my god, Tato, I mean, gosh, he's in castle. He was so far behind on some eco upgrades, and now he doesn't yeah, he does know have... what to do. Yeah, he's got 42 on food, but he's still very far from being able to click up. Not enough on gold either. We've got another raid coming in from Tato on the left-hand side. Still keeping things a little bit messy, but yeah, you can see he's pulled everything back across kind of that 50% mark on the map. I and, do. Uh, Viper's got time. I love the activity from Tato, though, with the couple knights he does have. And I think that with how much damage he's done, he could actually hold off Viper for a while with just Castellate Skirms. So provided yeah. he starts to get like ballistics in there, I think Viper's eco is going to be in such a stabilization mode here that Tato can stay in castle and be just fine here for a while. Yep, we've got Elite Skirm coming in now. We've also got the Light Cav tech coming in for Tato. Uh, so he's he's definitely going kind of full trash or preparing himself to be in a position where he just needs to spam units to buy yep. time. Viper's uh, only gold is that gold right there that he has now left. The other gold Tato has an outpost on. The neutral gold in the north, Tato's taking. And the other neutral gold to the east, Tato is castling. So Tato is just trying to say, Viper, what can you do as Mayans without gold? And he's staying in the castle age. This is brilliant Age of Empires. Oh, yeah. I mean, incredible control from Tato. That's what you want to see when you've done as much work as you have to take the map positioning, right? Yep. I mean, he's extended... Yep houses that siege workshop all up on that hill that's going to take time for viper to push back through if he wants to and so taking advantage of the resources and he's controlling that gold again viper pushed off of that gold yep. he has no gold income yeah and viper also doesn't have a ton of resources to sell which makes it awkward but here's he also my... just spent all of his gold my next question was like what does viper do to counter attack and he's going to try but oh man he also Realizes that gold has been town, uh, castled. Excuse me. Yeah. All right, that's going to go up just in time as he comes out for the TC. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you've captured it at this point, but Viper, I do. Has, Viper has four and a half hours of vital time. <laughs> Jesus. He has, had, he has had so many villagers not working, but he's somehow kept... I want to say he's kept most of them <laughs> alive, but he's lost 82, so I don't even know if that's true. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, 10% of his uh, eco idol. All right, so he relocates a little bit further back on that TC to protect the wood line a bit. He does have a decent number of plumed archers coming out, but he's taking an engagement against skirmishers. Yep. Now we'll go. Now we'll retreat in the face of the light cav as well. The viper has tried multiple times to get out to a gold. He tried on the right. He's now going to see Tato build another castle there. And then I'm wondering if he's going to make a dash to the uh, gold in the north. Because it is still there. But, I mean, Tato's just keeping an eye on everything now. Wonderful play. He's also making Latus and Knights. And he's got 32 skirms. I think Tato, I mean, he's had to work hard for this dash. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's had he's, to work incredibly hard I think for this. he can actually win this game, finally. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, again, I still think he's in the driver's seat. 130 bills. He's got 40 military to 10 from Viper, and he controls two-thirds of the map. Yeah, so he's very happy with where he's at. Now up to Imperial Age. So as long as he gets there without 
you know, taking some kind of absurd damage. He should be able to start walking it in. Latest production underway as well while he amasses skirmishers. Yeah, seriously. And, and you know, skirm is probably the only unit you really have to have. You might want to have some cav to snipe some trebs if Viper makes them, but uh, if Viper doesn't have gold, Viper's not going eagles. And skirmishers with Lithuanians will work more than fine against everything else. You know, we got Rams even at this point coming yep. in uh, to put pressure into the center of uh, Viper's eco. S split his base right down the middle. Gonna make it hard. It's so cool. And he's always he always has something there on that gold. I mean, right now, Viper's taking a little bit of it, but Viper only has one treb. And I think hey, Katja will be happy. We've seen what he can Katja. do with one treb, so... Oh, true, the treb I, is you back. Know, <laughs> I'd be shaking in my boots right now if I were Tato. <laughs> Pulling Vills to deal with the uh, deal with the Rams on the front side. We'll drop a mill just so he can keep his food eco rolling, Viper is, as he retreats back to the left-hand TC with his few remaining plumes. But look at that. Knight's just running under with impunity. Plus four attack means they're shredding those plumes. Yeah, and I, I think I, I somehow got ahead of you again, but it's GG. You Viper did, yeah. sees it, and Viper taps out, and Viper... I, I honestly thought it was a masterclass comeback from him there, right? I thought that he had, had done it when he counterattacked Tato after yeah. losing all those vills. I thought, oh no, Tato's let it slip, but it was the gold control dash and Tato's back in the series. If he could do more of that, more aggression, I think he could come back. Just one more game and it's a 2-2 series. Right? Exactly. No, it was a fantastic recognition of the maps, right? I mean, we and we were talking about if he did not ever see that gold, right? Yes. How many times that scout missed that gold? But then I think as soon as he realized there are two very exposed golds on this side of the map, it solidified for him that aggression was the name of the game in this one. And, and he played it pretty brilliantly, pretty brilliantly, securing all the relics as well, made it just so that his knights packed such a punch. Now... You can look at the map, sure. Rough map, your Mayans, you need the golds. And I agree with you. And Viper had to play like a beast to even have a chance in this game. Yeah. But I think Viper... I, it, it borders should have won this game because he had a 30 villager lead and he went imp and he took a fight with 20 spears before the pikeman upgrade. At that time, there was yeah. only 15 knights for Tato. Tato did have some, uh, some scorpions. But I think if Viper had a little bit more patience... Delayed his Imperial Age by a minute or two. As you said, got an upgrade or two. And then only took a fight with Pikeman instead of the Spears. Because there was the one fight in particular that was underneath his TC. I actually mm -hmm. think Tato doesn't deny Viper's gold. Viper could take the middle gold. And he could even take the four tile gold. Should is brutal on Viper there. Viper maybe should have died the 18th minute. Uh, yeah. But with, with the position he put himself in, I actually think it was achievable. Tato, though, you got to love the outposts and the gold control, and uh, that's a big momentum swinger for him. Yeah, I I'm with you. I mean, again, like, I was critical of the imp click because I, I didn't actually think he was going to be able to even get to the halberdier. Sure. Um, but, yep. but to your point, right, like, if you are going to be able to get there, then you definitely should not be throwing your spears away as spearmen, uh, yeah. let alone pikemen or halberdier. And it's, so it's tough, definitely... Though. Oh, a tough spot, you know, especially when, a, you know, when 10 knights are about to land in your farming eco, you feel the need to do something, right? Sure, yeah. Um, and then the only other thing I'll call out is like, yeah, great, uh, you know, great counter from um, from Viper with the crossbows, those 23 crossbows, but also that fight that, uh, that Tato was able to find to clear them up with the knights up near the cliff. I mean, that was huge because he took actually minimal damage from those crossbows by retreating his villagers and then cleared up the entire... Uh, massive crossbows, which meant that he had impunity moving forward again. Yeah, it's been an interesting trend. I think that's three straight games with the Mayans, obviously in different sets, where the Mayans have lost due to early castle age aggression, whether that's through the form of like heavy siege pressure and crossbows, which we saw Leary done against Hera, um, or like knight in siege. And I, I think it's a stylistic thing. Like Mayans prefer to sit back behind walls and with more defensive maps. And players have just been extremely aggressive against them. So uh, Tata very pleased with it. Uh, Viper gets his choice of the next map, though. Starting position's very important here as Viper picks Nomad. And oh boy, their fish are close, Dash. So uh, you know, we have Tato setting up shop with the Burmese, the civilization that he had picked on Regicide Fortress. And we've seen picked a few times in the playoffs. And Viper is uh, on the far oh. side here, but their docks are right next to each other. I was going to say, I just loaded in to see those docks, and my goodness, uh, what a spot for them to be in, especially because of these generations of Nomad, right? Where yep. you usually have a landlocked side, so Viper being the one whose dock is cornered 
in this situation. I mean, it just means we're in for, I imagine, quite a feudal age uh, naval battle. If there's one thing you want when you're up against Spanish and Nomad is you want to be directly next to their fish. And the Spanish are already going to have a bit of a lead because they do build faster, which applies mm -hmm. to their starting TC. But they need the long-term food income to be able to make conquistadors, usually. Um, if this doesn't turn into conquistadors for Viper, I actually love the Burmese against the Spanish. Uh, Burmese have uh, great cavalry, they have great infantry, and they have great monks. Yeah, fantastic halbs, right? Yeah. And there's no... The other thing about this matchup is that the, weak, the only big weakness of the Burmese and the people... The reason people don't pick them is because the Burmese don't get the final armor or castle age armor that is on their skirms. So they're weak against good crossbowmen sieves. But right. Spanish don't get crossbow. So that bonus doesn't even matter here, really, in my eyes. Yeah, totally. Right. Reliant on uh, on their gunpowder units because of uh, lack of crossbow for, mm -hmm. for Spanish. So, yeah, you're going to be very happy uh, to see this sieve matchup. And I have to imagine that Tato suspected this was coming right on some you know, level see, yes yeah, yeah you see you see your opponent drafted spanish hard hard for me to believe they're going anywhere other than than nomad when that's in the pool and you know the first two games while it feels like a long time ago now especially because game two was really long but tato had tried some interesting little counters i think and so Tat burmese Tato's was gonna watch Ooh. the doc bills no, Viper sees it. Okay, I was I was ready for the for the Vil fight. Okay, all right, good spot there. Does Viper know? I'm looking at Viper's point of view, I mean, he definitely knows they're docked close to each other now. So that much he is has confirmed. to, right? Because yeah. he saw a fisherman. Uh, yeah, he he would have specifically seen that that was a fishing villager. <gasps> Tato's coming again. Look at this. he's doing it again. Well, I think what Tato <laughs> wants to do is Tato wants Just to wall, wall it in. in. Oh All right. boy, this is so huge though. It's so sad that this comes down to a 50-50. And Tata says bad luck. He doesn't say bad luck. luck. He wishes him bad luck. I love it. You too. <laughs> They're not really gonna I would never. I would never. I think Viper I think Viper wins this. It's just a it's a Viper kind of thing yeah. to win this 1v1. I, I'll go with Tato, I guess. It's a coin flip. Oh, actually, I think you're right. Damn it. Tato got it. Oh. <laughs> he got it. That's actually huge, though, for Water Battle, no? Because you don't have Repairville anymore for... Yeah, it's huge for multiple reasons. The The first reason is you're down a vill that should be collecting the shore fish. Sure, uh, totally, totally. Right? The second reason is because when you go to compete for water, you normally use that villager to make the second dock. Right. So, you know, yeah, Viper and... now, his yeah. fish... If he wants to save them, he's going to have to send a vill somewhere really far away to be able to, to meet up with his fish. And that's the luck factor of Nomad. When you play Nomad, there's always a risk that you're not going to be in a position to defend your fish as easily as you'd like. So Yeah. Uh, that's, this is such a tough oof. spot because obviously, right, to a Spanish, you really you really want your fish to complete the fast castle, yep. right? Your yep. whole goal is to get to conks. Um but I would almost at this point consider running my ships all the way to the other side of the map. It would probably take too much time, and ultimately it would it have the net negative effect of meaning you don't have the food to go to castle. Mm -hmm, true. Um, but I just also feel like as soon as, and if Tato realizes, should be going to Fetal, look to get one fire galley out and really suppress the food uh, generation for the Viper. Okay, so very interesting decisions here from Tato. He is not going to pressure Viper's fish. But I think there's a reason for this. And I think the reason he's not going to pressure Viper's fish is because Viper's not going to have any fish left around this dock. That's a good point, right? Because he he already fished out like the next yeah. <laughs> um, couple patches of fish that you would go to. So, yeah, it's just this one 200, you know, uh, patch of salmon mm -hmm. that's left for Viper before he has to actually venture past Tato's dock to find anything. Precisely. And so what Tato's now done is he's, he's actually scouting with one of his fishing ships. Look at that villager in the north, too. That's a great spot for a dock to create a choke point. Yep, I think he'll dock there, and he also docked the middle, which, I mean, he's not really committing to it because he's adding the second dock. Ooh, but Viper, too, actually. He's, he's going fast castle is kind of my point, whereas Viper is going for fish control right now. Yeah, interesting. And I wonder, they, they haven't scouted each other's center docks. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very curious to see... If when Viper hits Feudal, does he even build like a fire galley in the middle to to scout the shorelines or, or a regular galley to scout the shorelines? Look at Viper's scouting and how incredible it is. He has seen so much without starting with the scout, whether that be Tato's base or his own. 
Obviously, we'll know that his four fishing ships will likely have to relocate at the very least. But he had actually added the fishing ship and is adding another fishing ship in the middle now. But is he going to scout with his fishing ship before he thinks this is free to do? Wow. That's such a good heads up nomad play from Viper here. Yeah, there it is. Okay, fishing. Yeah, fishing ship. And he's got a fire galley uh, already on the way about to produce out of his outer dock. Yep. I'll call it. And he's going to start chasing the fish and pressuring Tato on the outer ring. Is aware of the fish on the inner ring and immediately a fire galley in the queue there as well. Tato still a minute and 15 from Fetal Age. And it almost looks like a fast castle build for Tato. I think he's hoping to get away with having his fishing ships alive, which might not be the case. Um, very resourceful start for him, though. He's got the deer. He has a boar underneath his town center, and there's another one scouted. And then Viper, similar. He had just brought in a boar, and now he's milling the berries and the deer. So uh, with goats underneath his TC as well, he's got plenty of food and comfort now. Okay, Fire Galley out in the middle. We're going to see if he can get the pickoffs on the fish, because actually Viper hasn't yet killed any fish on the outer ring pressured the first one then mm -hmm. let it go and is looking for the rest mm, yep he's he's stuck with shorefish with his original fishing ship he actually oh no he didn't <laughs> i thought that he added a fifth but tato's fishing ship looked like vipers there for a second you're right he did let it go okay first one goes down in the middle he relocates the second fishing ship just to scout shorelines himself tato's looking for that dock from viper yeah, and it's Fetal Age, producing fire galleys of his own now in defense. Viper just didn't patrol far enough. Look how close he was to seeing Tato's dock in the north. He just didn't oh! continue to go there. He could have killed a fishing ship by now, and he didn't find it. So Tato is going to have a fire ship coming out in a second. And Tato is up to castle. Tato is on stone, Dash. Tato's on stone? As Burmese? I think he wants Aaron Just a castle drop. Aaron yeah. Okay. Actually, I mean, we've seen Aaron by uh, find a lot of success in this tournament recently <laughs> when in mass, right? Yep, absolutely. And maybe pretty good against Conquistadors. We haven't seen that yet, but that might be the thinking. Look at Tato save his fishing ships in the north as well. He's even repairing them. Beautiful save. And I wow, have to wow. say, this boar needs to be eaten on the stone for Tato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's actually making it so inefficient. <laughs> Look, one of his bills is not even working, and then they don't have access to, like, two full tiles. And he's <laughs> killing it. No, he won't even move. Okay, there it goes. Okay, too funny. Oh, uh, just too nomad funny. things, man. Uh. All righty, all righty. So let's, let's take stock again. We've got water control in the middle for Viper, although it does look like Tato wants to contest or at least maybe go snipe the fish because he is producing a fire galley out of yep. his center dock. He has saved his outer uh, fish as well, and now it looks like he's – Rotating around to pressure Viper's outer fish. Viper moving on to stone himself, which is pretty natural. As the Spanish, you're always gunning for that castle, getting those conks out yep. as soon as possible. But Tato will be the first to castle age a full minute and a half before the Viper. I mean, there is a big difference in the cost of the unit as well, right? The Conquistador costs food and gold, and then the Arambai costs wood and gold. So I think if you were to go into a situation where neither player has fish, which might not end up being the case, obviously, you always prefer the Arambai. So Tato, Especially because you get the free wood upgrades too, right? That like... too. Yeah, like that's a really big thing. So I think Tato is in the driver's seat now. And if he can dominate the water and keep Viper from fishing freely while also making the Arambai and getting them out faster than Viper, Viper might have some big problems here. Take a look at the north. Is, is Tato going to use the fishing ships to try and block it? Block. Uh, don't let him through. Okay, no, he's just going to let him go. It's a wild goose chase. But those those fishing ships are effectively idle in the meantime. Yep. Gets the fire uh, galley upgrades. He's producing a demolition ship in the middle before he ungarrisons. And there's the first castle, a very defensive castle out of Tato, actually, protecting the gold on the northern side and also ranging uh, the center just in case he wants a safe place to put more docks out. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting castle because he knows exactly where Viper is, and that's a perfect demo there from Tato. He knows where he, Viper is located, and he's he's going to stonewall this area instead. Yeah, I almost thought his first castle was going to go up near that stone mm -hmm. um, in the choke point between him and Viper, especially once he saw that he was the first in Castle Age, right? Yeah, like, yeah. if I saw I was first in Castle Age, I would probably go for an aggressive castle, but he's going to play it ultra safe, stonewalling instead in this area, and he's got the pressure right now with the fire uh, ship upgrades in the middle. Yeah, well, Tato's fire ships are kind of 
focused on the wrong thing right now. He's clearly distracted. That that will hurt him uh, because he can, won't be able to fish freely in the middle. But I still prefer Tata's position. Uh, Viper, though, going to try his best to come back on water. He's got War Galley as well. And that means he could take the middle and he could maybe push in the north a little bit. It is actually a pretty big blunder just attacking the house there because from two fire ships, he, lo he lost a 2v1. Yep, he did. Uh, not good, not good, not good. But he does get his stone walls up. So at least from uh, you know the land-based perspective, he's safe on the southern side, and he has the castle in the north to protect him from any conch raids that might come in. First, Arambai out on the field. We'll see if he looks to do some raiding, as we still have quite the naval battle on the top side of the map. Oh, man, Viper's had such hardship in this game, and he is recovering so nicely. Look at this fire. It sniped almost all of the fishing ships for Tato, not to mention that recovery we had seen from Viper, who still has two fishing ships in the middle. So this still comes down to the land control... But Viper hasn't rushed his castle. He's just going to go for Monks for now. And it's 42 pop for both players right now. Yeah, this one is tight. This is a very tight matchup. Small eco lead for the Viper, but oh so minimal at this point. Arambai now starting to group on the southern side of the map. So possibly going to look to see them start raiding as much as they can. Monks out onto the field for the Viper looking to find those relics. Yeah, and it's funny because Tato knows where all the relics are because that's a Burmese bonus. So, so he'll see that. <gasps> yeah, he's gonna he's going there already, but Viper's gonna get there slightly ahead of time. Okay, Arambai though coming in, so soon he'll see that, and now he's gonna go look for the snipe. Yeah, well, he should. He's got two monks though for the Viper. If he drops this relic, oh, <gasps> this oh, could no, be don't. two conversions. This he's could gonna be two conversions. He's gonna get. Okay, he got one. I think that's fair. I think yeah, that's, that's fair. That's that's fair. And it's better for Tato, too, right? Because uh, Tato, Viper has used both of his conversions, but Viper tried to save the monk, and no, he can't do it. And then, yeah, Tato just going to push away that other Aaron by with the conversion and now has uh, the tempo on the uh, on the relic pickup. Got to love the for trend Castle. here for, uh, for Tato, right? As Viper tries to convert both players just playing... <laughs> convert the Aaron by over here. It, it's, it's, it's pretty funny to watch the two monks just like walk past each other yeah. as they go convert each other's allies. Oh, he snipes the relic away from him. Look at that. They're <laughs> racing to the finish. Viper's trying to block it. <laughs> Hit him with your cane, old man. That's why you have it. Oh, and now Tata turns. Oh. <laughs> no way. Oh, and we're just converting back and forth. But Viper, at this point, he does get the conversion on the Aaron by, but there were four there. So oh. Tato should get it. Oh, another another one is out, though. And the conks are on the way. <laughs> the battle over the relic. This is hilarious. Viper was also extremely close to killing the monk with the final yeah. hit there. It, it, this conk could get him, though. This conk could <laughs> snipe him. How is he a sharpshooter? Oh, the move it's too risky, I think. <laughs> I think he's got to go for it. I, if I were Viper, I would just go for the kill. <laughs> Okay, uh, he's gonna retreat. He'll he'll go ahead and let that one go. This will be the third relic. This will be the third relic for Tato, so he does have the relic advantage on the map. Hey, he's um, gonna get again, relic number four. He knows where they all are. He's actually getting the one in the north as well, so he's gonna have four relics. Okay, just one more. As uh, wait, or there four on this nomad generation? Uh, there should there level. should be five. There should be five. Okay. I, I don't know where it is. It's it's in Viper's monk's hands actually, near his ah, castle at okay. the moment. So oh yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, but wow, that was. Okay. I think that's safe to say that was eventful and entertaining. Yeah. Um, I love that. And, and it was very unique. But Viper's actually ahead. At least ahead in Eco right now. And I think the Conquistador, while it's more expensive, can possibly pack a little bit more of a punch. We'll see. Absolutely. I think they're the more threatening unit, right? Uh, overall, I mean, both units are dangerous when they're hitting shots, but 16 attack on the conch means yep. that this pack of yep. four, right? One-shot villagers. Sure. Uh, so if they, if they find their opening and they're not being tracked then they can cause a lot of damage. But that's why I really like these stone walls from Tato so early on on the bottom side means he doesn't have to worry about that point of entry. It's only the top side of the map. Oh, boy. Really oh, boy. And that's exactly where he goes. And Viper picks up on it, but too late. The Arambai are going to slide right in here, and they dice up the villagers, and that delays Viper's economy expansion greatly. Great play. Yeah, that's a great few pickups. Eco KD, slight advantage for Tato. However, still behind in the Eco battle. Oh, man. Fire ship's getting converted in the middle. Tato unable to kill the monk, so deletes it. And let's see the Arambai and the conks here. And that's what we mean about the conks, right? Like, the conks have the six range. The Arambai, not only are they five range, but when they're at max range, they sometimes miss their shots. Man, what a, what a cool game, though. I mean, it feels like 
Feels like Tato could absolutely turn the series around with this game right here. He's got four relics, and he has the the walls on one side, so Viper can't even pressure him right now. Yeah, he definitely he definitely can. He's got to start considering what his end game looks like, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Especially if if he doesn't have control over the. I think this middle water is going to be hugely important. With the uh, Spanish involved, for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I just think, you know, if, if Viper is able to wrestle control of this lake in the middle away from Tato, all of a sudden, those walls become a lot less relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you've got, you know, galleys coming in to poke at your eco and then possibly cannon galleons at a certain point putting pressure into your castles. Viper's got an incredible amount on food right now. 35 on food. It's 20 on food for Tato. I'm not really sure exactly how Viper does it. I've looked around at his eco. He does have fishing ships in the back of his base, but he's got berries. He's got farms. He's got he's got boar even underneath one of his TCs. So it's just such a crazy mixture right now for him. Not easy to do this. Yeah, seven fishing ships to one, and then sixty villagers to fifty-eight. So so mm -hmm. much more equivalent in the villager category. But those fishing ships have been doing work, and to your point are what's giving him that food advantage. We also have um, Wheelbarrow coming in for the Viper, so the farming speed about to start picking up and the food generation going to be pretty big, which means he'll... Bloodlines, though, coming in, actually, so he is investing it. I love Tato's vision. You could tell he's flirting with the idea of heading over to Viper's base through the stone walls, and he might be doing that because he has castles and monks and the TC there to defend the other side. Yep. Also, Tato is always so quick to get outposts out, and I love that, particularly on, on Nomad. Really on every map mm -hmm. is where you'll see him do it, but on Nomad, the value of that is so big. And he's coming forward for a castle on the bottom side of the map. He sees all of the conks, all of the military in the north, and he's already defended with a castle and monks of his own. So he says, that's fine. Let's play that game we played last time, Viper, where I bring castle pressure. To yeah, the front of your base. It seems like Viper must sense this could happen. I think Viper might drop a defensive castle here in a moment here. He sees the Vils. Oh, he's actually trying to gate there. No, 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 Viper. If that's I'm... not that's not gonna work. What are we doing? What? Oh, he's gonna trap Oh, I love actually. He's just gonna trap him in, drops another castle. Ooh. With far more villagers. Yeah. So his will go up first. Right. I actually think that Tato needs to cancel and and drop and move it south. Agreed. Like three tiles Agreed. on the hill. There, yeah. there he goes. Yeah, and that's actually that's this fine. is actually that's better fine. for you, I think, if you're Tato. Yeah, now you're in range of both. Ca uh, this one's fine too. I actually liked his second positioning a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, but this will work. I think now the question though becomes, Ooh. can you actually beat the Viper to Imp? Yeah, I'm also kind of concerned because we saw Viper's castle go up because his whole economy built it, and he was Spanish building <laughs> faster. Right. I'm a little concerned the castle might not go up, but it seems like Tato is confident it will. Yeah, he is gonna uh, he's gonna spend some some Arambi lives to make it happen. Oh no way. This might not go up, Dash. This might not go up. How did Viper get back over here so quickly? Wow. Wow. But also heads up play for Viper. He's throwing a lot of conks away though, mm -hmm. to make this to make sure that this does not go up because he's choosing to focus fire the villagers down, but he will successfully do so as long as this last vill gets sniped. <laughs> wow. Stefans <laughs> blue suede shoes. Okay, she goes down in the end. So Basically, his entire force of conks in order to prevent that castle from going up, but he clicks to imp, and Tato's completely without a map position now to play from. That's that you're spot on because the the goal here would have been fast imp into Trebs, and now Tato is never going to complete this castle. So that's no, and he's stone. even bringing more vills forward, and he's gated out now. He, oh, this is just insult to injury here when you bring five more vills forward thinking you're going to be able to get the last 18 percent and then he just clicked through and his vills start pathing back but like this oh. is this is what's crazy and this is why watching this this is why viper is like the goat right and this is why watching him at his peak is so entertaining tato had the the correct play he prepped for yeah. defense on the other side he switched position for a castle drop and he brought army and viper was able to delay it enough and then somehow find the position. And now it's it's also 93 eco versus 71. Now that might not yeah. stay that way. I didn't realize Tato's got another big ball of Arambai on the other side. Exactly. He's trying to unite his forces too. Uh, bringing the ones from the south. Going to maybe snipe some of these fishermen. Okay, they look for the gate to trap them in. So the conks can deal with them. Now we'll just look for the army trade. But yeah, Tato's got a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on the Viper's eco at the moment. I think just the big issue is he can, not, he can never finish this castle. Yep. 
So that's 650 stone that went down the drain, and Viper gonna hit Imp in 30 seconds. Trebs will be produced, and then he can choose which direction he wants to go, north or south around the lake. I, I feel Dropping like a, another TC, look at that. I feel like as, as Tato gets some great raids, he's also killed Viper's fish too. Tato has done a wonderful job to catch up here. A, a Viper's building another castle in the north? Tato could find that? <gasps> oh, if these are Rambi, find it. Viper, and they will. The they will, they will, they will. The house, the quick walls. Yeah. Oh, but no, but the TC foundation never went down. So, oh my God, he gets, he gets the barracks block. What? Oh, who? Yeah, this guy is too good, man. He's too good. As Tata would say, freaking Viper, man. <laughs> Viper, man. <laughs> but I, I, I still love Tata's aggression, and while I've, I've seen why the conquistadors are chosen, the Arambai just don't cost food. So, you know, Tata is trying That's to chase true. down these conks. He's getting some kills, and Viper arrives to Imp. While he can make Trebs here, Dash, I don't know what he Trebs down right now. I was going to say, There's actually, no at this point, you leave that Castle Foundation in the south because yep. Tato can't get to it. You need to be sending your Trebs to the northern side, I think, and pressure into those two castles that Tato has built. He doesn't know about the second one going up just yet, um, but I'm with you. Tato's bought himself incredible amounts of time, still a minute and 40 seconds away from Imp, but he will get there because... He's keeping the military from the Viper mm -hmm. in the back of his base. Now, a very Viper thing to do would be chemistry, cannon galley in the middle. And then suddenly he had like six cannon galleons and it would range the entire map. And then yeah. Tato would, would not expect that to come. So I think both players have to respect the power of the middle lake. Tato, though, again, he's been under zero pressure at home because of these Aaron by running in constantly. He could tie up this series here, people. He's got 60 yeah. kills, 40 deaths. 40 seconds away from Imp, his economy is still flying at home. This is, um, dude, I'm getting, I'm getting chills right now, Dash. I didn't think we'd actually be here after the first two oh, games. Thought this, I thought this game was over when that castle didn't go up, and yep. now it really is a possibility. Uh, and and I love the call out on on the, again, the lake in the middle. So we're looking for a university. Yes. And the moment that, there it is, right as I say it. Viper drops it in the north. The university is going down. We're going to look for um, the upgrades to follow. And then the, the cannon galley production in the middle. Tato, though, looping his Rambai finally back from behind enemy lines to his main force. As he hits Imp, Parthian Tactics comes in. He's already researching redemption, block printing. Some monks and Arambai for him. Yep. And so the Arambai gets stronger, and he's continuing to make them. Viper's just only on eight conquistadors and is thinking about skirms. But Viper is absolutely thinking cannon galleons in the middle. The Tato needs also, to make sure he does damage with his Arambai before those cannon galleons hit. Viper also made a militia? Yeah, I saw that. That's that's cool, Viper. Going champion, huh? Against Burmese? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, how do you even misclick that? Why was he in his barracks? <laughs> Um, <laughs> conscription, illumination, all the upgrades coming in for Tato uh, as he hits Imp. And and honestly, I'm a little surprised that Viper has not been able to even get forward. He's just now bringing his conks forward where mm -hmm. he'll, he'll find that, that second castle that's been built. Tato's doing the right thing. He just needs to make sure his Aaron Bai don't get trapped here. If he... It, oh, God. Oh, God. Did you, did you cast a curse him? Oh, no! He's kind of like... He's kind of stuck back here is why I said, oh, God. He's absolutely stuck back here because he's, yeah, he's walled in on the southern side. He can obviously still harass this wood line, and he has some, you know, he's got some some ground to work with. He can move around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his only his only retreat option, his only point of egress is to go straight through that castle. I don't um, even know if Burmese get fast fire ship, by the way, but if so, Tata needs to do it. And Viper, if he's going to go cannon galleons in the middle... He needs to be sure he has Navy to protect the Cannon Galleons because I've seen players do that before. You just get excited, you run out with Cannon Galleons, and then suddenly they all get sniped by a couple fires. Yeah. Also, Elite Skirm, Viper. You, you got regular skirmishers here, bro. What's going on? He probably thinks that upgrade's on the way, but Tato's going to take the right? fight and say, uh, you don't have Elite, Viper? What's this? Yeah. Second Archer Armor at least coming in, and they do have Bracer, but they will melt, they melt to so Aramai. Yeah. Look at look Tato's at build up on the left side. The worry for Tato was that he would lose his Arambai and Viper could react to a push. Tato's got four Trebs waiting. He's got additional Arambai. He's got monks, and he's also going to have some light cavalry here. If he takes Viper's castle out, the Arambai might even be free soon. Viper needs more army in the middle of the map. That loss of skirmishers was horrible for him. 
Yeah, he's, he's 15 seconds away from the elite skirm at this point. He's getting supremacy? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he's, he's expecting to be raided. It's Hato. How much does supremacy cost? Isn't that kind of expensive? Um, It is, but Viper does have 2k gold, I guess. <laughs> yes, yes, no, very odd. Conscription for him as well. Now we have pressure coming in to this castle up on the hill. Three trebs, four trebs? Four trebs. And uh, Tato as well moving forward to drop yet another castle in this choke point. Control the gold. Yeah, and you, you don't want to drop the castle if you're Tato. You just got to sit here and repair your trebs and be ready to defend. So repair, defend, and mass units, obviously. It's kind of hard to push anywhere else right now for either player, and yeah. Tato knows that. I mean, so he, this is where the fight's going to happen. And Viper's going in with the Vils! Supremacy Filbitures! Oh, I love it. That's what it was for. Let's go. I was going to say he only has 25 military, but he actually has 160 oh. military. Yeah, I mean, Supremacy Villagers are no joke, and they're actually not dying. And even if it's just enough here, Dash, to take out the Trebs, it's worth it. But he, can he do it? He's going to lose his castle in the process if he doesn't repair. Yeah, he's got one Treb as well just sitting in the castle that he's not using. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, Vils come forward. I just think there's a lack of military at this point. He doesn't have enough production. It's so funny, though. I mean, the Trebs went down for Tato. Viper's castle's still up, which is all he wanted to accomplish in the first place. And again, I'll quote Tato and say, freaking Vipey, man. Like, that was, was Viper pulling a rabbit out of a hat. But, Dash, to your point, Viper's got to have some more military on the map here, too. And that's a big issue for him still. Yeah, and he may have Supremacy, but he has Arambai in his eco as well. But all of this is happening on the front. Ay, 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 ay. Again, I, I keep gravitating towards the middle, where I feel like Cannon Galleons could do wonders for Viper. Uh, Galleon, even. Like, 20 Galleons with Cannon Galleon support, you'd take out majority of the buildings that Tato has along the shoreline. And we sit here. Viper is somehow defended from that. 170 population. It's 150 for Tato. Tato's got like Kevin Aaron by, and I guess he's gonna. He's shifting to the middle now, and seems very unsure of what he can do on land. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, definitely, I've fallen behind you in game time again. It must okay. be like a 40, 40 minutes in or something. Okay. Sure. Just hop in. Hop. The, I'm gonna hop um, back to regular game. The regular yeah. game. Yeah, that's all good. Hussar for Viper is he's thinking raid, and he's definitely thinking about some. Skirm Treb movement in the north. But we've got a lot of castles up, Dash. We've got castles everywhere from both players. Tato has four relics, but I mean, gold and stone is still everywhere. Holy cow. What a game. Also, Viper, right now, he's, he's using the Supremacy Vils against the Castle Foundation that was remaining from Tato. <laughs> so just in case Tato ever breaks in and wants to finish that, I guess. But... Where is the army, man? Where is the army, Tato? You got to deal with this fall of skirms and conquistadors. He's going to go to the other side right now. And I saw petards in his queue. Oh, God. But his petards are actually going the other way. That has to be a mistake. Oh, dash. Tato wanted a surprise, but he can't break through yet. Yikes. No, we do. We got big battle in the middle. Uh, for water from Tato, winning it slightly with fire ships, but yeah, now uh, Viper gets to move forward on the northern side with just skirmishers and trebs. Mm -hmm. Man, interesting to see, you know, sappers, 200, uh, someone said 256 second chat and confused me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you to that person uh, to see supremacy, which is what my brain meant to say. Uh, and, you know, this, this just unique style of hold here from Viper. And Tato yeah, getting some unique kicks. On the way for Tato. So he's going to look for Bombards to deal with these Trebs. Oh, and yeah. Plenty yeah. of White Cap to deal with the Skirms. Yeah, I mean, and Burmese get Hussar. And the unique tech he just researched, Tato, I believe was the one that means the uh, Light Cav line gets plus five attack against Archer line. And I don't know if that helps against Skirms, but I still know that Light Cap's insane against Skirmishers. So it's more than fine either way. And he clears up two Trebs. He's also trying to break through in the on the other side here, Dash. Uh, Viper, just crazy stone walls here. We might even see fortified wall for the snake. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, let's see if he brings it in. 
Got Light Cav cleaning up skirms on the front, but going down to the castle. Viper and Tato now doing battle on the bottom side. Tato wants to break through these gates, but can't get it done. Oh man, Viper's being so annoying. He sniped a bomber cannon with the conks, and he's just gonna see the next one, and he's gonna run in after that, and he's gonna not kill it, actually. But it's the middle dash that I'm worried about. Viper's waiting with those cannon galleons, waiting for his moment to push the mid. And I'm just seeing, well, castle, the docks, the TC, the houses, stables, the units as well could also be hit by those cannon galleons. What do you do if you're Tato right now? I, I don't know if there's really a unit, but like, is there anything approach wise that you can try and do differently, you think, your dash? Oh, lordy. Um,. I don't I really don't know. I mean, I think again, it, a lot of it to me comes down to the water control in the middle. Mm, like yep. I I feel like at this point, especially now the Viper has cannon galleons, I feel like your only option as Tato is to get control of the water. So he's got some demos coming out. He's Ooh. looking to take those cannon galleons down. He gets one, but not all three. I think actually what he's doing is correct. Hussar raids. Yep. Look at this. Big Hussar raids on the northern side. And he's got to get control of the middle back. But that's my concern is the middle. I'm not sure that he's going to be able to do so. Yeah, I mean, Viper getting a lot of defensive technologies. So clearly he feels like the the middle is how he wins this because the Spanish have the superior Navy. But if Tato can break in, I guess that's his issue. He mm. can't realistically break in, but he's going to push the north maybe. And Viper's at it with the supremacy villagers again. <sighs> yeah, and these bombards are going to go down to villagers. Possibly, yes, it looks like they... Oh, no, they're getting repaired. Ooh, and Tato's also okay, saving one... his Treb as well. What a save. Yeah, one goes down. Oh, Treb does go down Ooh. to the, gan the cannon galleon. And yeah, ultimately, his docks get cleared up on the front from the fast fires. Having fire ship to fast fire is just not enough. Cannon galleon's going to pressure this castle. I'm worried now for Tato yeah. because, he's, again, he's just going to lose so much space. Oh, and the cannon galleon's from the outside. Viper, this is cheating, bro. Yeah. He's going to take out more siege. It's and it's too so much. frustrating because Tato has... Oh, demo time. Nice little demo there. But, like, Tato actually has more Hussars, but he just can't raid anywhere because right. of where Viper has control. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what his avenue to victory is now at this point because he's completely lost control of the water. And, and with that comes the space control on land. Yep. He's got some Arambai in the south but he's going to have to eat through fortified walls if he wants to get anything done there. So instead, he retreats. It's just this massive pack of Hussars, but they can't really threaten structures. All they can do is threaten eco. Well, I mean, that's a lot of eco. Oh my God, Viper, what the? the House wall. wall. Did he trap all these Hussars here right now? Uh, I mean, they technically could run out through the south, right? But it... Well, there's a house, though. Oh my God. Viper just trapped all those Hussars and is going to yep. send them to their death. I was wondering why he didn't, like, wall initially or, or quick wall between the castles and the wood oh! lines. And he has conks and tattoos. How did those conks get there? Uh, he busted through the wall on the right side. Or, like, oh, near around right the there, yeah. With, that's what the water control gets you, right? Aye, he's going to retreat aye. his conks right back to his fire ships. Monks go down that were on their way over to deal with those conks. And the conks are going to sit next to the fast fires. Uh, maybe running a little too far here, because they'll run into the castle fire yeah. here. All that said, though, back over to the northern side. Look at this. I mean, Viper is stuck in his base, and there is a... Well, Treb goes down to another cannon galleon. I was going to say there was a single <laughs> Treb. I'm getting <laughs> angry. Away. I'm getting I'm angry, angry, angry right too. now. Like, <laughs> Viper needs to stop being a little nerd and just go that. kill Tato on land like... like someone who isn't a coward like <laughs> uh, what you just said though that is that is my feeling about water maps like <laughs> like as a player i every i ban every water map possible because oh. i just never want it to get to a point where i'm like well i'm stuck on land and i can't deal with yeah. you on water it's but just... yeah tc now being pressured on on the northern side of the island by two cannon galleons hussar is in response to that but it's not enough so it will go down and now Finally, look at this. Finally, Viper has some room to breathe, and we've got 10 Hussar coming in for himself to raid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and he's no know, longer getting pressured on that castle. And he, it's very similar. Well, it's very different from the from the Ghost Lake game, but the concept's similar where he's just chipping away at Tato and slowly breaking him down. And then Tato's eco will be exposed, and then he could go for raids. 
And, I, you know, anytime Tato tries to show up, there's either a fortified wall or there's a castle. And you just cannot breach the, the castles. Not to mention that the villagers for the Spanish, they're very strong and hard to kill in the first place, right? Yeah. It's yeah. So yeah. crazy. With that supremacy. D didn't didn't believe it when it came in, but it was maybe one of the most important techs of this game. Because mm -hmm. it allowed him to take down those four trebs from the initial push that, uh, that Tato had. And I think that initial push packed such a big punch, if not for those villagers. It's, it's a um, bad sign for Tato that he doesn't have... Like, he's still on fire ship. I'm going to assume Burmese don't get fast fire because Tata would have been the first person to click that. That's my assumption as so, well. So, you know, the, the good news for him, though, is that he recognizes how important the outside is. And so he's actually making some fires in the north. Uh, Viper also has made some docks, though, and is making fast fires at the same time as they continue to duke it out here on this shoreline in front of Tata's main economy. Yeah, that's a good point. But at least he's getting something done on the outside. I think my fear is that at this point there's too much disruption you know, to, to his economy on the shorelines yep. with just these cannon galleons eating away at the buildings. Hussar is the only unit, really, that Tato is able to create yeah, at Vi this point. Viper's just now getting to having full upgrades on his Hussars, so he didn't have the final two attack upgrades. Mm. So that's, that's going to make things a little bit north. worse. Yep, yep, yep. I think that's actually huge. It's a it's a big sign that for the first time Viper's building buildings in front of that castle. That's true, right? He finally feels like he has control of that space. It's going to make it a lot tougher for Tato to ever pressure that area again. And he gets control of this stone. It's just a it's just a bit, but it's something. And yeah. uh, Tato completely pushed off of that gold in the north. That was one of his big lifelines right there. Yeah, Viper, uh, he's happily banking up resources, happily raiding Tato, Tato. Probably shaking his head, like, how do I change this position? Certainly having Fletching and uh, Bodkin and Bracer for your castles, though, would have been an amazing help earlier, uh, so he's doing that he, now. He, he's bringing the boys and girls. Look at the south gate. He'll get through as well. They will, yeah. they will break that down. Supremacy villagers with sappers are no joke, man. It's not a meme. Like, Viper doing oh, that yeah. to save himself was spot on earlier, and look at that. Gate down faster than a ram would have taken it down. Exactly. He's got the villagers leading the charge. They're the meat shield in front of the Rams and the Conks. Two siege workshops there. Back over to the north side. These cannon galleons continue to work away. And as Tato tries to rush uh, Hussars down to the south side of the map to deal with that incoming villager pressure, it just means that now the Hussars for Viper can do whatever they want. Yeah, and, and while, north. I mean, the amount on food looks good for Tato. He's going to break eventually here. Right? There's just too much raiding coming from Viper. It's too constant. And he yep, there he's not is. letting any area slip. And Tato calls the GG. Man, oh man. <laughs> I'm fight. so gutted for Tato. <laughs> <laughs> because I, he's probably thinking the same thing that Jordan said when Jordan had lost his best of five against Viper. Is like, man, Viper, if you were next to me, I would slap you right now. Just There's like just, yeah. so many crazy moments in this game. Tato had the lead. He had the initiative. Yeah. And somehow this, it all this, disappeared. That castle play, man. The, the presence of mind from the Viper to know that it was worth throwing away the lives of, what, 12, 15 um, conks yep. to kill the villagers uh, and ignore the Arambai that, they were, that were there to protect. I mean, it just completely saved him so much pressure on the, on the south side of his eco. And then Stonewall, Fortify Wall, that side up means that there's really only one one area of the map that he has to worry about on land and with mm -hmm. the superior naval tech controls the middle four cannon galleons is all he needs yeah really well played by the viper tato really well played wasn't able to take full advantage wasn't ever able to really bust through viper's flank and really take a big dent out of his economy and viper goes up 3-1 here in this best of seven semi-final tato has played incredible age of empires 2 today and while the score is one to three he was ahead in more games than one. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Viper has that comeback potential. And I think he also realized Spanish is my number two pick, not just for their castle age, but for their post-imp play. Uh, Spanish have every trash technology. They have the unique text we saw, and they've got the Conquistador. And, like, that combined with the Siege and the Cannon Galleon just makes them so much stronger than Burmese late. So, uh, as I load in here to the game, Tato is playing as the Gurjaras, and then Viper is playing as the Bohemians. Bohemians. Gurjara's on this map. You know, I, I think Gurjara's was seen in the past, um, but this probably isn't a comfort pick 
for Tato. Uh, I think Viper, uh, he's playing with the civilization we've seen on Fortify Clearing many, many times. So yeah, I was going to say Bohemians feels comfort on, on comfort, you know, mm -hmm. yep. uh, for, for a map like this. Gurjaras is a little strange, but... Um, but that being said, given the number of relics on this map, right, and typically what we see is a big contest either or one one player controlling the middle, somebody mm -hmm. else taking the outside. You know, the Jajaras love to play into scouts like Cav, things like that. So maybe not an awful pick. I actually have a prediction, and we'll know soon enough if I'm right. I think Tato right, goes. I think he goes feudal age pressure on the outside. Ooh, okay. Jajaras are really good at feudal age pressure. And I know that, like, Sato had tried that against Viper once before. And then Sato said later, he said, I forgot that the only Civ that doesn't work against is Poles. And Viper's obviously mm. not Poles now. And Gurjara's fast castling is a little awkward. And, yeah, I mean, uh, you're down 3-1. It's going to be tough to win this series anyways. I could kind of see a player just uh, saying, screw it. Let's just YOLO right. and Feudal. Yeah, and, and sometimes imbalancing civs is the best way to do it, right? If you can get away with, uh, you know, winning a civ matchup that isn't expected, and then what you've done is you've you've kind of lopsided the way the rest of the draft plays out. Like, maybe sure. Tato feels like, okay, if I can get, if I can eke out this win with Gurjaras here, then I feel like in the remaining maps, I can actually pick myself into advantageous matchups with what's remaining. Mm -hmm. um, now, all that said, taking a look at relics, the outside relics, all favor they favor the viper a little bit more you know obviously the players have to scout those to see him but it is sure. split two to two on either side and then the five relics in the middle are relatively well spaced a couple very close to tattoo though so we'll have to see but as you as you said you've got the prediction that maybe he goes for feudal aggression which i would love to see yeah i mean he could go he could go into the boom and he could go stable units and compete for the relics and make monks and whatever else I think the later this game goes, I think the Bohemians tend to do better, and I think the later the game goes, Viper tends to do better as well. Mm. Uh, which, you know, that that's tricky. You know, to, to, at Stato, it's like you can't just go aggressive every single time because of that, but it just I guess the main thing in my mind, Dash, is everyone who has good success against Bohemians is a civilization that has a like early spike in Imp, and that's not Gurjara's. Right. It's not them at all. Yeah. They, they need like a lot of eco. They need time. They need to mass the chakrams. They need to go for the stables. So I think it would be pretty easy for Viper to get to his ultimate composition if Tato doesn't pressure. Yeah, also been the theme of the series, right? The one game that Tato won was one where he kind of he felt like he had pressure from, from start to end. Yep. He's going to do so it. He's going to do it because he hasn't built another house yet. So I think he's going to go up on 20 pop. And I believe his after he pushes in this final deer, he's going to loop that camel around to the south. And Viper's already walled, but it's still just palisade walls. I really think that you could break through that and make it so Viper has to adapt a bit more. Yeah, very early walls from the Viper, at least oh on the southern God. side. Just about to complete those. Viper, does he know this is coming? So he's going feudal age for defense. Is that is he going to just click up the feudal here and right. try he to defend also from this? Okay, he's building one more house, but but pushing his deer in now and sending out another villager on the left hand side. It looks like to wall. So. Yeah, I mean, like from my point of view, oh, right? There's Loom. He is going up. He, he's yeah. He's on his way on my side here. So like, I think Viper's expecting pressure, and I think Viper knows he might need a tower or something like that. And he's fully accepting that he can have a slower castle time in order to defend that pressure. And Tato's making the barracks. Like, th this is Viper just understanding Tato's win condition and possibly yeah. remembering that game that he played against Sato like a month ago where Sato had had tons of aggression with the Gurjaras. I do like that Tato actually delayed his loom till after Fetal, though. I agree. Buys him a slightly faster Fetal time and... And we'll see if that's enough to put pressure on the walls. Mm -hmm. I assume that Viper's just going to... Do you think he even builds a barracks, or is he just going fast castle walls? I think he's going to adapt. Or you can't fast castle off this, huh? Because yeah. you only have 19 bills. Yeah, I think but... you go you go wood upgrade, farm upgrade, and if you experience pressure, you make a barracks if you have to. If you experience pressure, you make a tower if you have to. What I don't get, though, is why Tata wouldn't go forward with bills. Because the whole point yeah, of scouts working is you need to have a tower as well. 
So stable at home. We'll see. Maybe these two bills run forward afterwards. Nope. Back to berries. Okay. So uh, stable up. Spearman out. He's going to use the spearman actually to scout the northern side of the map. Mm -hmm. It looks like. Um, I should also yeah, point out that if Tato doesn't do any damage here, I believe that his eco will lead to a faster castle age. Um, unless Viper does like a lot of selling and, and buying of resources, I believe that to be the case here because Gajars already have so much extra food with the passive food income that they get from the sheep. Tato's even taking sheep now. He's got horse color farms. So even if Tato doesn't kill anything, he'll still have scout presence. He could still be up at like 17 minutes or something. I was going to say, we've got the market coming up for Viper already. Just adding to his walls, houses behind. So he's definitely playing very defensive. Blacksmith already up at the first farm going down for the Viper, whereas we already have five for Tato. So F Fudiko really rolling uh, for Tato. Mm. This is, these are the types of mind games that I love. Like, this is, this is just not the type of game we've seen yet in this series. And... Uh, I knew that coming into today that we would have more of these mind games between Gamer Legion players than we would with totally. the AM guys, right? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, wall's coming up for Tato, though, now as well. And he's really not doing a ton with his scouts. Look, mm -mm. He still has his uh, Camel Scout and another scout created, just kind of chilling out at home, playing defense almost. I feel like he's also slightly paranoid because he saw Viper's feudal time. Right. And so he's like, well, I saw Viper's walled on both sides. He might be attacking me. So let's just patrol our flanks as we wall up. Yeah. And to your point about the ecos, right? Like, he probably made the same recognition that if nothing else happens and we both hit fetal at the same time, I will actually have the, the better eco and, yep. and hit castle first. So really, he's kind of happy to have this happen. Completing so, the walls on the northern side as well as we speak. It's so cool, though. Like... What I said is spot on. If it's just straight farming to the next stage, your Jaras go up faster, but Viper's buying food right now. So Viper's already bought 100 food. He's got a little bit of a lead because of it. And my next question will then be, does Viper go uh, like additional... Does he add Spearman at all? Does he go to the middle? Uh, Tato's see... going to go forward on the, on the south side, I think, after this gate. Oh, true. And the question is, and the question is does Viper catch it with his scout? Yeah, Viper Scout did just break out here. And I guess they're just looking there for she goes. position. Okay, she's, yeah, she's running forward, though, and he's going to miss it. Mm, true. He should so double Pat back unless he checks the corner. Yeah, he doesn't attack. Yeah. I would, I'm would. i the type of guy that I, I'm a nerd. I like to attack the walls, and I like to annoy people. <laughs> You get the I, little, yeah, get the ding. Yeah, I would do that, and then the camel scout would come kill my scout, and I'd look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Uh, um, but let's see here. So yeah, he's he's searching. He's definitely he's gonna try and get his hundred percent. His classic, the viper, hundred percent scouting. Yeah, you know, scouting in. But this vill coming forward clicked up for uh for the viper just a bit of, a bit ago. So quite quite an advantage on the way to to castle age actually. I mean, if Tato can kill that scout and also have this villager here run your build run your build to the edge of the map don't let yep. him see it don't let him see it viper's looking viper thinks it's just one scout this is huge for that vill because the scout has to run the other way for no! viper Ooh. okay okay <laughs> viper is also uh -oh. bringing spears uh-oh Okay, first spearman's on the way. You could kind of, you could kill that if you paid attention to it. Uh oh. No way he's gonna find it. Okay, I was like, he's running south of that scout. There's no way. But Viper is, he's fifty percent ahead on the way to Castle Edge here. Mm -hmm. he does get two kills on those scouts with the spearmen. At least Tato is able to kill the scout of the Viper, mm -hmm. so he doesn't have nearly as much vision. Gonna build a house, but I, I expect Monk Siege right on on these hills, right at right as soon as he hits Castle. No. I, I think so, and I'll be curious to see just how aggressive Viper is in the middle. Viper's now like, okay, perfect. He didn't, he wasn't able to do damage against me in Feudal. I'm able to get to Castle H faster, which means I can now control the middle, get the relics, and boom. That's all Viper yeah. wants. It's going to be a simple game from here, at least so he thinks. If, if, exactly. Tato, <laughs> if Tato's patient enough, and he can have, uh, you know, like... A couple elephant rams, uh, mangonels, and camels and breaks in, then maybe he could do damage. But I, 
The thing that I don't love about it is all in with siege never feels great with camels because camels just don't kill villagers and they don't kill monks all that easily. Hmm. Yeah, I feel that. And I mean, Viper's already got like six or seven spears out, right? So yep. it's like yep. you can always pull those back. He's using them right now to control the middle of the map as he brings monks out to try and look for relics. But let's see here. Tato about to hit Castle Age. He already has one stable up in the south. Immediately, those camel scouts turn into camel riders. And there's the siege workshop. Viper's still unaware that any of that's happening. So he's going to get caught completely off guard. I would like to see it. Would, do you want the first Manganel to hit? Or do you want him to see? Do you want to see him go elephants right away? Like, what do you... Out of this siege workshop, what do you go for first? Hmm... I think it depends, of course, right? Everything of does. Course, of course. I, I, <laughs> what do I, that's what I get for asking T90 a game Well, no, no, I was going to say, but, <laughs> but uh, I'll give you the scenario. So I think if you go for the elephant ram, you actually break through faster, but then yeah. it's less it's less helpful against uh, pikemen or monks, right? Um, I was going to say, actually, excuse my ignorance on this question. Do Can, can monks convert elephant rams like units or... Or no? Like, so, how do monks interact with elephant rams? Th this is a little embarrassing, because you think I would know that. I oh, said, no. I said the other day, right? So, like, sometimes I'll say things with confidence, and then I'll see something in chat that makes me think I'm wrong. And I said right. that you can convert them from range, Tattoo? like regular units. And people were like, no, that's not the case. So, I thought you could, too. I thought you could. I could, be, I could be crazy, but I think you can, because I think they're treated like a unit because they're also made with with uh food not with wood yeah um yeah. but tato also he alerted viper a little early by attacking one of those houses i saw that he, mm -hmm. which was kind of strange to me before the manganel was out but manganel's out now he's gonna pressure onto the houses viper coming over to try and wall behind did also bring a monk but that could be my argument for why the manganel goes first right is if, if monks can we'll find out very soon here as yeah. the armored element elephant comes forward yeah i'm getting differing results even now from people so i i'm not i'm not sure um i yeah he can he can he sees he's retreating the elephant right yeah i think he would retreat the elephant if he thought it could be converted exactly pato yeah. would know we don't know because we're noobs <laughs> pato would know yeah i really don't know anyway the point is Tato is breaking through. Yes. That's the important thing here, is that the pressure is on. He's opened a hole, and we've got Shrevance Riders on their way into the eco. Now, while all of this has happened, Viper has had complete control of the middle of the map, and he's bringing back his third relic. Yes. Tato had tried with the light cap, but he lost his light cap while he was distracted. So he had, like, two light cap in the middle. Wasn't really able to stop Viper from getting any of those relics. So now it's full focus on this area. If Tato could push this TC... That is where Viper's main gold is. And Viper would have to leave his walls into the middle to get gold otherwise. I love it. Two Manganels coming forward. Re a repair villager there just in case. Two monks to protect as well and convert some of those pikes as they look to contest the riders. But uh, great positioning as well, having a hill here in the back of Viper's base. Pressure is on. Yeah, Viper, he's really going to need the gold right now for the monks, but also the text. He did get atonement so he can convert Tato's monks. But I have yet to see Redemption. And a lot of players would have gone for Redemption first. So, uh, you know, Tato, a, a, lot, a lot is actually going right for him here. He took out Viper's market. Viper needs a new market now. He's taking out Viper's houses. Viper now doesn't have pop space. So this pressure is actually working so much better than I initially thought it would. Yeah, Scorpions and Light Cav being created by Tato as well, recognizing that the monks are going to be the game-changing unit yeah. for the Viper, right? Like, pikes are a threat, yes, but monks are the game-changer. Yep. Also, Tato noticed that Atonement was in there. He saw that Viper was kind of heading towards his monks and backed away for a second. Yep. Now he's going to have Atonement himself. Now, Viper might not expect that. And all this go. could be huge oh. for Tato! Was like, that the fastest monk conversion ever? Yeah, I was going to say, how did Viper get that? He must have started conversion on something else. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the, okay, Manganel's looking for shots on the pikes, but they're not finding them. And uh, and Viper's going to be able to pull back. He's definitely staved off the pressure for a bit. But in retreat, oh, there we go. Some connections. Yeah, Viper needed... Uh, sorry, Tato needed those shots right there because Viper's TC on gold is still almost down. Viper's not that far ahead in the economy right now. He does convert a Scorpion. And now Viper's he's going to go for the Manganel. He's badly housed. Yep. Like, have Wow. In. 
actively losing a TC. The Pikes come in to try and clear some stuff up. They will have a good engagement against the Light Calf. He does convert one of the Mangonels as uh -oh. well, which will immediately take down the Scorpion and go one for one with the other Mangonel. The siege pressure has completely stopped. Yeah, a fourth TC, and that's all Viper needs to know. He, he sees that, he goes, "Great, I've killed the Mangonels. I'm putting up a fourth TC." Yeah, I mean, it's still super messy, right? Seven minutes of TC idle time, but you're spot on. He's like, felt like if Viper held there, he could hold and and maybe win the game. And I'm curious now. A lot of players, uh, like Draken and Ganji, and these players that played in the uh, Platinum League that were promoted from Gold, they mm -hmm. would go forward with a couple pikes, and they would no, 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 that castle, that's a safe Viper castle, but that's not a win the game castle. I think what Viper could have actually run across the map and just dropped that directly on Tato's face, and Tato would have had nothing to stop it. Well, I I agree with you. There, there's what's weird for me about that castle is like it doesn't defend the pressure that you're currently receiving. Yeah, like true. I know you've I know you've d dealt with it quite a bit at this point, but like. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's a super defensive castle. I would either defend the actual pressure that I'm receiving on yeah. my main gold, or I would go forward and put pressure on the on the walls of Tato and say, you need to retreat and deal with this. Um, all that said, uh, Viper's happy to throw these pikes in on the bottom side of the map just to remove the siege. Again, another Mangonel goes down. Yes, there's two Scorpions, but you can't pressure a TC with just those. Mm -hmm. True. On the bright and side so for Tato... The lead continues to extend. On the bright side for Tato, his food eco is crazy. And he will be on four TCs. Uh, he right, also is... Coming up now. I would love to see him actually leave the south with the relic. Grab a monk. Pick that up. While you're at it, make another monk. Grab the other relic. Just get those relics back home. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it actually allowed Tato to be uh, somewhat competitive and, and live in the back of Viper's mind, I guess. Because there's always that threat that he could be here. But we'll see. And this is also yeah. the, the long-term approach for Gajaras is they want to use mobility. And Bohemians want to push the sides. But the fact that Tato is still here must really be frustrating for the Viper. Oh, definitely. Right? I mean, and, and the fact that he has a hill to control of all things. Yeah. Uh, so still, three Scorpions, a couple Light Cav on this hill just to pull attention from the Viper. Bringing Monks forward to look for those converts. Light Cav will dive in. Scorpions retreat. Pikes move in defense. Great play out of both players. As with four TCs up, now we're in a booming war. But Viper, 13 Ville lead. And way more gold in the bank. Yeah. I, I think maybe why Viper didn't go for the forward castle is we see Tato continue to try here. He's doing a great job. The Viper, I think, has misclicked this. He's clicked after the light calf. So his pikemen are chasing the light calf and dying to some scorpions. But um, Yo, this monk has guts. Well, he's dead now. But I was like, <laughs> what he had guts. He was, he was in it, man. <laughs> um, but like, right up there. I feel like the reason Viper might not go for the forward castle is because... That's not the game he his civilization wants. Right. But if there if like Tato stays down here and is always pressuring and Viper never fully clears it, and then Viper can never get be aggressive either, Viper will regret it. There Tato he goes. 29 on food, the Viper 37 on food. So mm -hmm. slight advantage there for the Viper. And there's a middle castle for Viper. That's maybe the pressure that we were expecting. It's not as bold. As we know it could have been, but you don't want to throw your lead if you're Viper. It's been a long series. You're up 3-1. And I know he he always feels comfortable in these types of positions. His main gold's on fire. Uh, main TC, sorry, is on fire on that gold. Still pretty comfortable he can hold against it. Yeah, he manages to take down one of the Scorpions with TC fire. And still just pumping out bills. Pikes and monks, pikes and monks. And full map control through the middle, right? Those two those two castles, and he's up to him. He's halfway up to him, but I didn't even see that click happen. Yep, he's on his way. He's going to get one. He's going to get two. Well, I'm not sure what he's going to convert with his scorpions, but he's killing the light cav. And it still doesn't seem like Tato's progressed. Viper's converting monks, killing monks, killing siege. Ay, ay, ay. It's such a random mass of units. Yeah, 16 vil lead at this point and uh and tato is keeping up the production because he needs to right but yep. he's now forever he's forever castle age at this point nowhere close in the food count to being able to click up and uh i don't know what he's going to be able to do to get through these units from the viper i mean scorpions are great against pikes but i don't think it's enough to actually pressure any of the buildings down once you kill these pikes feels like viper is just going to take his time and mass some cannons and 
I, I don't know how art. Tato's feeling right now. Obviously, you know he's down 3 1, so that's not great. But I wonder how sure. he feels this is going because it doesn't seem like he's made any progress. No, uh, I, I I think literally if that if he had managed to take down that gold TC, he would feel worlds better, yeah, right? Uh, being able to pressure the villagers off of that TC. But the fact that he never got that TC down, he now sees Viper hit Imperial Age. Chemistry is about to complete because Bohemians can click that in castle. And a third castle going up. Tato with the counter castle, though. Yeah, I, I think Tato could kill a couple villagers at least. He's getting yeah, fletching, so he could maybe deny it. But, oh, he Viper's going to have it. trebs. He'll deny the castle, but two trebs about to come out. Immediate. He, he, don't lose that treb. Okay. <laughs> he backs the treb up, <laughs> and that means that uh, Tato's uh, castle is, is not long for this world. And soon after, yeah. uh, Viper can complete his and continue the punch up the gut. And in the meantime, the Pikes have won the bot side battle. And they are they're putting pressure onto the Siege Workshop. Yeah. Tato's completely stalled out. Yeah, and you could see what Tato was doing. The game that he did win was crazy all in aggression. Mm -hmm. And I just think Viper read him like a book, man. Like, I really would have wanted to see Viper get surprised by it, being walled and going fast castle. But he knew. He just yeah, knew. That... And it could have been them talking, their teammates. So maybe like three weeks ago, uh, yeah. you know, the Gamer Legion players had talked about the Skurjara builds. And so for that reason, he knew and... I will. I guess we could always ask them later. Uh, sure, sure. But it just, just it looks so tough for Tato now, and it's a shame he's played so well to get here, beating Yo. But this is Viper in tip-top shape. Yeah, he really has three-one over Doubt, right? Three-two over Yo to get to this point, and uh, looking like he will fall to the Viper in four-one fashion, barring anything um, spectacular here in the end. Does build a castle deep in his eco, still spamming out villagers, but yet to click up to Imperial Age. Well, three to three on relics. There's no real advantage there for Tato, and it definitely feels like if he if he if this was the first game, maybe he would be calling it right now. I agree. As I say that, I do recall him playing on for quite a bit in the first game. So maybe the second game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But all the buildings in the bo uh, in the bottom of the map getting cleared up as well. Just one ram is all Viper needs to be able to do that. And, uh, and knock those relics out of the monastery as well. We've got a double bombard cannon, three trebs moving forward. Halberdiers being thrown into the eco of Tato. This is the final push. I'm sure as soon as those trebs start targeting the castle, Tato is going to start feeling like it's time to, to type those those two identical letters in well, the chat. Well, I don't know if you noticed. I just did at the top. The top size. He's yeah. raiding. <laughs> he <laughs> so is raiding. He's actually, he's really trying here. He's... He's yeah. trying to hit from every any side that he can, any angle he can. Also, trying his best to defend. I could see why maybe he could hope that the Chakrams could kill the Halbs, but it still feels like Viper's going to take out the position. Yeah, and the, yeah, the Viper's aware of it. He's starting to send Halbs that way. He literally could just drop a house in that opening. Yeah, and, that's true. And kind of nullify the whole push anyway. Uh, but now three bombard cannons on the front. Full repairs into this castle, but it will not survive. It goes down. And uh, I think Tato's just, he's just out of options at this point. Castle Age, fighting tech advantages, or tech disadvantages. Loses his relics at home, loses his relics in the south. That Tato had a ridiculous game against Doubt where he just spread out to the outside. So, like, I think that part of him is still in him right now as he's right. expanding farms on the right. He's like, maybe I've got a chance, but Viper's going to castle, and Tato calls the GG. He says, GG, well played. Yeah, good luck in the finals. In finals. And wow. I mean, Oof. Viper and his opponent, Hera, are just in the shape of their lives going into the final tomorrow. And Viper, to me, just showed to be the complete strategist today. And I, I think that's why I, I, while Hera's dominance is, is clear to me, I just, on all the maps that we have, there's yeah. just so many tiny little unique aspects. And it gets to a point of frustration when I watch this guy. I appreciate it, <laughs> but like there's some really tiny things that Viper can sometimes do and be aware of. And, and it's like yeah. a sense in the moment and he just figures it out. So Tato, I hope he's not too disappointed. He actually had to like kind of really get it together at the end of the group stage because uh, he was in the relegation talks. He ended yeah. up, uh, he ended up then, you know, winning the round of 12 
uh, winning the quarterfinals to get here. So it was still a really good season for him with lots of wins and I think a good performance against Viper today. But yeah, it makes a great run near the end. Crazy. And then again, consider, consider his opponents, right? You know, it's like you, you had to get through Doubt and Yo just yeah. to earn a best of seven against the Viper. Um, those are massive names. I know, I think you and Dave were talking about it at the top of the day today, like the, the two semifinals you know, probably have the top four players in the world currently. Agreed. Yep. But, you know, but just behind those four are uh, are like Valesa, Yo, and Doubt. <laughs> so the fact that he had to go through a couple of those guys who are just outside the top four to even get to this point, um, really impressive out of Tato. Viper looks like he's in peak shape. Um, Hera Ever, the executioner, right? Like when I think about him, he, he it's execution correct, style play, correct. right? Like he just does things kind of perfectly and by the book for the most part and doesn't misstep for the Viper. Uh, strategically, he's just always on point. Again, multiple times throughout the series where we kind of going like, oh, this is the winning play for Tato. And then Viper does something a little out of the ordinary in response, like the Supremacy Villagers to kill Trebs, right? Not too many players say, you know how I survived this? Supremacy Villagers, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so he just, yeah, I think again, his experience is unmatched and it, it lends itself to that strategic creativity that he's able to put on display and rightfully earns himself a spot in the finals. Viper Hera is a classic man. That's going to be quite the battle. Is it a best of seven? Yes. Best of seven. Okay. These are, and people are like, let's do best of nines, best of 11. I know no, other man. people do it. I don't mean disrespect to my, my colleagues and friends in the Age of Empires 2 community. <laughs> this was three and a half hours. Okay. And it we was had, only, five and it was games. only five games. So there may be best of nines, best of 11s. People want to do that. That's cool. But if you want the highest quality games, yeah. best of seven is completely fine, people. <laughs> that, that's all we're going to put them through. I don't want a situation where it's been a four and a half hour, five hour slog. We go into game nine and you and I, I guess I'll be cast with Dave tomorrow, but Dave and I are like, uh, why didn't they get that quick wall? <laughs> like why yeah. that very basic <laughs> thing? Why didn't that very basic thing happen? Well, I mean, I'm 29. My arm falls asleep when I play for over two hours. So I, <laughs> yeah. Um, but hey, I'm gonna say this. Uh, one final thing about Tato before we close this is I actually would have given Tato greater odds against Hera or Leary than Viper because Tato's the strategist, and then Viper's the speedier strategist, right? Mm -hmm. and, and like, and whereas Leary, Hera, that don't get me wrong, their strategy is incredible, and I'm sure they're writing down things now. But I really feel like you said it's the execution thing. So it was like, it was good to see the teammates on both sides of the brackets. But I think for Tato, if you would have asked him, even though he might not have been the favorite against Leary or Hera, I think sure. when he saw Viper, he was like, oh, he knows all my tricks. I feel that. Uh, I feel how do that I do 100%. that? You know, 100%. He fought valiantly <sighs> in the face of it all. But the GOAT will not be unseated today. And we'll see if he can... He can wrap it all up tomorrow against Hera. I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I will be just a fan tomorrow in chat, spamming along with everybody else.